Last time on Roll With Me, The Ties That Bind. Wolfgang, the human warlock, Denier, the tabaxi wizard, and Osmo, the snack boy fighter, after being conscripted into service by Lieutenant Kaneswall, journeyed to the northern border of the Eternal Golden Empire, along with the rest of the able-bodied folk from their village. Upon reaching the border, they got their first view of the great chasm that divides the continent, the Maw. And at its edge, guarding the only land bridge between the North and South countries, sat the fort known as the Wall. It seemed abandoned until further investigation revealed the undead threat lurking within. After dispatching of the zombie soldiers, our heroes found two survivors, Tobias Smith Sr. and a terrified adolescent boy. The boy was not all he seemed, however, as interrogation turned to terror when the young man revealed himself as an acolyte of a bleeding god and brought forth a legion of undead to overtake the fort and convert its inhabitants. He may have succeeded if it were not for Denier, Wolfgang, and Osmo, who quickly proved to be more than a match for this psychotic youth. The boy pleaded to an unseed master to grant him more power, only to be met with a fatal rejection. From his body, the team retrieved a beautiful crystal, a crystal eerily similar to one that Denier's got in his possession. Reinforcements arrived some days later, and the beleaguer company marched back home, greeted by a festival in their home, uh, in their honor by the townsfolk. Several weeks have passed since your return from the wall, and as the time passed, word of exactly what happened up north has spread around the village. It's early in the evening, as a familiar tabaxi steps out of the library and into town. Denier, you've become quite popular lately. The men at the tavern and the children of the town always bother you for a story, although the children's mothers believe you a bad influence for filling their heads with ideas. You're in rather low spirits today, as you still have yet to find any reference to this bleeding god. So, you decided to head to the local tavern to try to lighten your mood. As you march through town, I want you to make a quick perception check for me. Absolutely. Ooh, yeah. As you 22. walk through, as you walk through town, an unusual sight strikes your eyes. As you see two horses sitting outside of the guardhouse, uh, they seem to be adorned in some very interesting regalia. They definitely look military, but you don't think too much of it. So you continue to the local tavern. The local tavern is quaint but pleasant, with tables and benches set up out front for the people of the town to eat, drink, and enjoy spirited conversation. Though you can't help but think back on your times at the Wandering Weasel every time you approach. You're greeted with a cheer from the townsfolk, many of whom marched with you to the wall as your eyes glances past them to a familiar serpentine head sitting in the corner. Asmo, the folks of the town have definitely been friendlier to you as of late. Mm-hmm. Though, though your rough demeanor and tendency to crawl off into the woods at night has made some of them a, it has made you a bit of a pariah. You've been living at the tavern's larder for almost a whole moon now, and have yet to find anyone who can fence your loot that you acquired at the uh, fence your extra legal loot that you acquired at the wall. Super Slum- legal. Yeah, extra legal. Slump begrudgingly offered you a position at the town guard, but you aggressively declined. I like miss me with it was like one of those miss me with that like ugh. <laughs> pretty much you drink your ale and you can't help but wonder exactly how much longer you can you're going to stay here as the commotion of the men at the other table catches your attention you see the familiar face of Denier as he approaches uh, if it isn't a bookworm what's going on with you I haven't found anything about well you know who as of late well, you haven't found out anything about Slump? I mean, no. he's fat. I know that, but I'm talking about the kid that we met, the one at the wall. Yeah, was, I still think about it. I just, like, I, I was fighting out that zombie and getting him off you. Just right. looking back a little bit and just seeing... <laughs> just seeing him shoot him. The kid was like, you will not defeat me, and he gets shot. And he just hits that wall and just bounced on that bed. <laughs> It was, the more and more I think about it, the more and more funny it is. It was actually pretty, uh, it was actually pretty funny. 
it was a, it was a, it was something realizing it was about to hit a brick wall. Very, very funny. You hear another roar of excitement from the other patrons as Garrick approaches the tavern. He greets uh, them cheerfully, but excuses himself as he notices the two of you. Well, well, Denier, thank you again for letting me borrow that book. It uh, helped me make a lot more sense of that spell tome my brother left behind. And yeah, Osmo, I'm do it. yeah, no problem. And Asmo, still what's, uh, what's up, champ? Still bumming around here, I see. Oh, what can I say? They have good ale here. No, I'm a bit more of a pilsner guy myself. Mm. Hmm. Get you anything? He kind of waves to a server. Uh, just more of the same. All right. Because of my constitution, I actually requires a fair amount of drink to get me. And how about you, my feline companion? I wasn't attacking without getting. I have just something light. I want to keep my mind about me tonight. Yeah, he holds up three fingers. They only serve one thing here. Is it ale? It's ale. Damn. <laughs> yeah, not quite like that other bar, huh? Now, that other bar had uh, options and a decently attractive lady at the bar. She didn't have a story about herself, but I'll say this. The bartender there was a bit of a showman, if you know what I mean. Yeah, he seemed it. I don't know. Didn't really talk to him. Yeah, yeah. He might have missed out a bit. Yeah, uh, that place radiates magic. It's absolutely unbelievable. Something, somebody incredibly strong is in that bar. Hmm. Well, as long as they serve up the ale, I don't mind dropping the gold. Wonder if they'll ever be back around here. And you never know where they'll appear. Seem to be a bit of a wandering bar. I suppose that's where they get the name. So what have you been getting up to the last month there? <sighs> down. I mean, I haven't left because, I mean, free room and board. It's good for a guy like me right now. I don't know. I just... I feel like I've been spinning my wheels since getting back, you know? I just... I don't yeah. feel the same just busting up bar fights and trying to find lost sheep. Well, maybe you should be better at finding the sheep. Like, like speed, see if you can like speed running almost. Like, how fast can I find this sheep? And my record, is, my, my my record is like ten minutes, but it literally only wandered to the back of the barn. So why didn't you check the barn first? Well, I did check the barn first, but it was behind. The, like, oh my god, don't look now. He kind of like slumps his head as, uh, well, appropriately, Terran Slump approaches with two heavily armored soldiers. Oh, That's man. them over there, sirs. <sighs> As one just looks over, what, a perception check, what insight, a perception check, what am I seeing? All right, go ahead and give me a perception check. That's a nine. Dem some heavily armored bros. Oh, boy. Uh, well, I knew it would come to this. I just kind of wipe, wipe the, <laughs> I lick all the beer around my face. Fine, Slump. I knew one day you would come for me. Crack my knuckles. Slump and the soldiers make their way over to you. The soldiers laden with thick, elaborately decorated copper mail. One appears to be a half-elf male who looks like he hasn't slept in days, and the other a copper dragonborn who looks like he's about three seconds away from stabbing somebody. If you want to make a knowledge check, you might be able to gauge a little bit from that. Ah, uh, excellent. One of my worst stats. Oh, a you're both check? there. A, a knowledge check? Uh, which... Oh, sorry. Uh, intelligence, general. What is... What is that? Sorry, my pathfinder's showing. Fifteen. Twelve. Ooh, fancy that, Osmo. You can tell because you've been there before. These boys are from the capital, and not just any capital guard. These look like, you know, the kind of guys that you actively tried to avoid during your stay there. Oh, my God. Are they... Oh, boy. The, are these special guard? They're they're pretty special. They, they're they military guard. Oh, so... Ah, uh, oh. So, All right. Uh, Asmo, uh, Asmo turns and just finishes his drink real fast. <laughs> Hold it there, sir. Is one of you... Hold on. He pulls out, like, a series of scrolls. Uh, is one is of the, you... Denier High Wind? Yeah, that's that the elf. That be me, sir. All right. He cracks the, se he cracks the wax seal. Denier High Wind of the Colony of Amberglade. Your presence has been requested for an audience with His Majesty King Bahum, first of his name, son of fire, protector of the realm, champion of land and sky, and immortal emperor. 
You are to make audience in the Great Palace at Dragon's Rest on the day of the first full moon of the Wayward Crescent Scar. Is one of you Asmo? Uh, Asmo is just stunned by what he just heard. Asmo's in, like jaw, like he has his jaw, you know, his jaw can unhinge, right? Yes. His jaw is now unchanging to its maximum a snake can. <laughs> I'm is looking right at him. Is that, is that him? Garth <laughs> just kind of nods. <sighs> Osmo of the Colony Amberglade, your presence has been requested for an audience with His Majesty King Bahum, first of his name, son of fire, protector of the realm, champion of land and sky. Sorry, I have. this is my job. I have to do this. Okay. okay. Imm immortal Emperor, you are to make your audience at the Great Palace at Dragon's Rest on the day of the first full moon of the Wayward Crescent Scar. Um, uh, uh, quick question. Um, uh, <laughs> um, the, co the copper, yeah, the copper dragon boar is like glaring at you. What? what? Like, I just kind of like I get kind of my hands out. Like, but like, but like, um, is so who put you up to this? Is this a prank from Garrick? Garrick, is this a prank? Just grabbing him, shuffling him. Funny Garrick, job, is, Garrick. Garrick is just kind of shocked. I, I, I don't, I, I don't. Wait, so you're Garrick? All right. Shh. Garrick Bright, scale of the colony of Amber Glade. You're pre he continues on as oh Garrick's jaw just drops. This is a joke. This is a sick, cruel joke. This would, is an who, insane honor. It's, a, it's an insane joke. There's no way this is happening. Where? I, why would the... Why? <laughs> like, Asmo, just, look at it like this. Why would people like this come to a town like ours... To play a prank on us. Wayward Crescent Scar. <laughs> Hands the scroll over. There you go. There you go. There you go. I got one more of these to hand out. Do you know where a uh, Wolfgang Connolly is? Uh, he lives in town on a hill with his, with his baby. Look, man, I've been riding all day and all night. Can you just yeah. show me? Like that way. I just point to where it is. Do I know where it is? You you you'd know a little bit. Like you you've like seen you, him you, home once or twice. Us, do you want us to take you? Is that what you're asking for? That would be appreciated. All right, let's go. Okay, and you can tell me who hired you for this goddamn prank because it doesn't make any sense. And we head out. <laughs> yeah, this dragonborn is just still like he's breathing down your neck, Asmo. He's just kind of like staring at you. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we cut to Wolfgang. Wolfgang, you've kept mostly to yourself in this time. After giving up your search for the wandering weasel and the enigmatic Tom, who seems to have just vanished as suddenly as he appeared, you decided to spend time refining your rusty skills and exploring this power that your father passed on to you. More than anything, though, you've been spending time with your son Elliot, who is swiftly approaching his first birthday and has been getting closer and closer to taking his first steps all on his own. Jamat stands holding the boy's hands. Are you ready, Master Elliot? Go to daddy, he says as he lets go and points over to you. Uh, uh, I'm gonna roll for him. Bah! Yeah. Roll for baby. Roll a, for, roll a baby check. You baby check. All over go. Fall yeah. over again. Baby check is very successful as the boy just keeps his feet under him. He like waddles. Da 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 da. That's a good boy. Come here. Come here, Elliot. He gets all the way across the room to you and just kind of like grabs onto your coat and you pick him up in your arms. Ah. Yeah. You're so big now. Look at you taking your first steps. <laughs> Soon he'll be bigger than me, Master Connolly. <laughs> Although I suppose it'll be a good amount of time before he catches up to yourself. Well, given his progress right now, uh, uh, I can say that's probably faster than both of us are expecting. <laughs> uh, it always is, sir. It always is. You get a knock on the door. Oh, I'll, I'll get it, sir. I'll get it, sir. Jamat steps over. Do, do, do. For a brief moment, your heart kind of expects to see another pamphlet for the wandering weasel. But instead, as the door swings open, you see Denier standing there in your front walk. You haven't talked much since returning home, though your mutual interests in this bleeding god and all the other things that transpired up north have led you to the ri library from time to time. Good evening, oh. Wolfgang. What or, can we do for you gentlemen? He kind of like looks around. 
Um, we have a little bit of a situation, and uh, there's somebody in town right now that's looking for Wolfgang. Yeah, we're right here. Uh, like, they, they followed you. Look, uh, I'm sorry. Is this the Connolly residence? Yes. Like, what do you want? The sleepy half-elf looks at you. I assume you're Wolfgang, sir. That be correct. All right. He pulls out a scroll, cracks the seal up top. <clears throat> Wolfgang Connolly of the... T oh, God, this is hard. Wolfgang Connolly of the Colony of Amberglade. Bit of a tongue twister. Your presence has been requested for an audience with His Majesty, King Bahum, first of his name, son of fire, protector of the realm, mm -hmm. champion of land and sky, and immortal emperor. You are to make audience in the Great Palace at Dragon's Rest on the day of the first full moon of the Wayward Crescent Scar. <sighs> Hands you the scroll. Uh, the Wolf King takes a look at it, just reads it over. Great. Okay, like this. You must have found out who I was. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I I just I'm just delivering the message, man. Look, I gotta I gotta be heading to the wall in the morning. So, like, is there right. a good place to stay around here? Oh, you can stay in the Not guard house. Mine. Oh God, slumps there. Yeah, he's he's been following you. He's ah. infatuated by the fact that there's royalty here. Well, royal guards here. He's just puffing. He's just sucking his stomach in the whole time, isn't he? He's trying. Oh man. Wolfgang sets Elliot down, just sets the scroll on the table, and says, fine, I'll be there. Thank you. You can make arrangements however you would like. And, uh, oh, hold on. He pulls out uh, what looks to be a golden ledger of sorts, or at least it's paper that seems to be lined with gold. It's very intricate. Uh, it looks very hard to forge, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, if you present this to any inn or place you might stay on the way between here and the capital, the crown will cover your expenses. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> it is, is something uh, funny, sir? Uh, with the way these two drink, uh, that might be a bad idea. Eh, it's not my concern. We drink lots too," says the says the dragonborn that's still like inches away from your face, Osmo. How, how, how much taller than Osmo is this dragonborn that's right behind him? He's probably about six inches taller. Like he's he's looking down and breathing on you. How close is his snout to the back of my neck? My you can neck. you can feel the humidity from his breath. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> As well as Mary's, how. Uh, how intimidating does this guy look? Uh, he looks like he could eat a boulder. Mm, interesting. Yeah, a whole, a whole boulder. Yeah, if he wanted. Boulder's gay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, it seems our uh, business is concluded then. Indeed. I'm going to go get some right. sleep. Oh, my yeah. God. Off my lawn. Yeah. Thank you for your time. And, uh, Denier, uh, Wolfgang, can, uh, actually, Wolfgang, is, uh, is it okay if, uh, like, we come in and discuss what's happening right now? I could brew some tea if you'd like. You, you know what? Do you have any booze? I, I feel like tea is not the thing I need right now. Uh, sure, whatever. Just don't touch anything, Osmo. Okay, can I like, touch a seat to sit down on? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Asma like creeps in under your shoulder, under your arm that you're holding up. I'm assuming against the edge of the door. Yeah. Jamak kinda... goes and yeah, Jamak goes and sets uh, little Elliot in his crib, and he goes to goes about fetching dr beverages for you all. Yeah. Denier enters. He makes sure that uh, if Garrick wishes, he comes in. Uh, he bids Slump a good night and proceeds to close the door. Uh, if he's trying to get in, he will probably close the door right in his face. Yeah, sl sl Slump is uh, very much, like, attached at the hip to these soldiers. Mm -hmm. And Garrick excuses himself to go basically fanboy out and prepare for the journey ahead. <laughs> so he basically saying. says, uh, so, like, can we, like, meet at, like, dawn out, out, out in the front of the town? Like, uh, 
he seems like very excited and kind of awestruck. Mm-hmm. Calm down. Yeah. Take a deep yeah. breath. I'll be there. Okay. Uh, uh, see, see, see you tomorrow then. And he kind of wanders off. <clears throat> um, his brother in that group. I don't even know what. Could... Okay. Um, are we all sitting down? I'm guessing. Uh, do we? If you Wait, want to. Can we? Uh, t- is there like a, a place where we can sit down and speak for a moment? There's a table. It has four seats. One seat a little dustier than the rest. Uh, Asmo takes that one. <laughs> hmm. Denier will sit wherever he is told he can sit. You can sit wherever, Denier. Don't worry. Much appreciated. And he will find a seat. All right, what do you boys want? We just got... I thought it was a prank. He said, Aswell puts the whole thing, the, the, pretty much the, the notary on the table. Someone's from a king's a big deal. It's a big, it's a big deal because he's the goddamn king. He is the guy who's in charge of all this shit by default. And he is now summoning us when the only thing that we've all done is fought that stupid guy with a big eye that you blew, you shot with your damn gun, which again, let to know what's going on with that. Oh, well, technically, I, I slammed some holy energy into his chest. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you got. I haven't been back to the capital in about six months. The capital's not exactly a great place. I don't know what to think, think about this. But he probably knows what we carry. In your you do recall that the... Uh... You you do recall remembering that the king does look for these materials. Mm. Mm. Well, it'd probably be best if I accidentally left my shard here at the house. I don't know what he wants this shard of pure evil for, but I'm not giving it to him. You're going to leave it in the house? With a baby. And my butler, yes. I can take good care of it, sir. He says as he's pouring each of you a small glass of whiskey. Thank you very much. You're welcome, ha, master. Ha. It burns a little the first time. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Like some water to go with that, perhaps. It, it no. lightens it a little. No. Very well. Uh... You seem a little young for the hard stuff, sir. Uh, get you some tea, he offers you, Denier. Tea would be lovely, thank you. Absolutely. You, sir? He turns to you, uh, Wolfgang. Tea will be fine. Absolutely. Be right there. Goes and throws a kettle on the fire. And heads out back to pick some herbs. Leaves you guys to talk. And Denier, if I had to hazard a guess, he's very interested in your rock, which appears to be made of the same thing. I would expect as much. You're not going to give it to him. I don't want to, seeing as it's the only aspect I have of home. But at the same time, this is the king we're talking. He might have information on it. But he's collecting them for something. What? I don't know. He obviously has more knowledge than us on this particular subject. And if this bleeding god or whatever has influence over the king, I don't want to take any chances and give him even more of this material. But if he is evil and the bleeding god has influence of him, do you really want to pe- leave your peace here with your son? They didn't even know where I lived until you brought them here. Why don't you bury it out back? Don't even tell us where it is. Only you know. I'll just say I destroyed it. Okay. I just... You gotta forgive me, I was just doing my thing, enjoying myself at the bar. And all of a sudden, in walks in the guy, hey, you're gonna meet the king. 
It's just... You told me that was gonna happen a year ago. I'd say you're off your rocker. As I was just sitting there going, just lapping up his whiskey with two hands. Oh. Tastes very oaky. <laughs> he was going for it, though. Like, he just keeps going. Like... Oh, sorry, Daka, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Or maybe he heard what we did at the wall and he's got a job for us. Do we That's the most sure? likely. As I was just sitting there, sits back in his chair and just nods slowly. This, I, uh, whew, I just don't know. This is not what I expected at all. <clears throat> I guess we're heading out tomorrow. Oh, and Garrick's coming with us. That'll be, that should be okay. He could be worse. Hmm. Yeah, he could probably be, uh, probably be our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not emissary, but, um, liaison? Yeah, I guess liaison. <laughs> Out of character PR person. <laughs> He's the boy scout to make us look good. Yeah, pretty much. Uh... Plus, you do recall that, uh, he said his brother works in the capital. In the king's personal honor guard, no less. Oh boy! Mm. Yeah, we'll probably run into, we'll probably run into his brother. So it'll be. Have you ever met his brother? Just curious. Well, I've heard stories. Okay, kind of stories. Yeah, none, none of you have ever met him, but if you do want to give a uh, knowledge history check, you might be able to remember a few things. I think I will. That was a two on the five. Five, seven. Yeah, neither of you know much of, um, except for, like, you know, the story of the uh, hill giant, which everybody has told. But they've all told different versions. I'm to assume it's just, like, when they think about him, they just imagine Garrick with a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they know they know what he looks like. He's He, he is very much like Garrick. He's, uh, he's, he's a uh, brass dragonborn, very tall, very strong. And he's, some say he's good with magic. Some say he's, you know, a master with the sword. Nobody really knows for sure exactly what he is. But yeah, as you guys drink your tea and whiskey and finish up this awkward conversation, you all leave to prep for tomorrow's journey to the south. Asmo sits in his bed, I guess the equivalent of his bed, looking up and just being worried about going back to the capital after all this time. Yeah, the flood of your youth and your hasty departure from the capital just keeps you awake at night. Mm -hmm. You only get a short rest. Not that it matters. Okay. But Did for you... flavor, you only got a short rest. Fuck! Wait, this doesn't matter. I'm fully recharged anyways. Exactly. <laughs> Shit. Denier, what do you do to... Uh, the night before you leave. So Denier goes back home, and the first thing that he does is, as soon as he walks in, uh, uh, hey Lex, um, ah, ah, going ah. out of town. What? The old, the old man kind of just like sit, sits up from the desk where he was sleeping. Hmm? Denier walks over. Check what you got going on there? Pulls out the 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 scroll or the you know the note, and he extends it and shows it to him. You're like, well, fuck me sideways. This is right. real. Yeah. Two two big fellas in copper armor with decorative looking horses pulled up not too long ago. Huh. Same folk walked by here asking a few questions. Nothing about you though. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, looks like you're going places, my boy. Looks like that fresh air is exactly what you needed. He says, picking up his pipe again. And that means that once I go to the Capitol, I can find a bookstore and buy some books for this library. <laughs> so you can, lad, so you can. <laughs> he kind of lights it up with his thumb using a little bit of thaumaturgy. Oh, that's the stuff. 
<laughs> the boys seem a little bit nervous, though. Mm. I don't blame them. Have anything to do with that rock of yours? I think so. Apparently, the king's looking for him. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I ain't never seen you leave that thing alone since you came here. It's almost always on your person or in your damn hand. Yeah. Which makes me concerned if he actually wants it or if he just wants us to do some work for him, given what we did at the wall. Well, I, I hear a few tales here or there about the king, but whatever you do, do what he says, boy. He says as he it takes a deep drag. Not ain't, wise, mm -hmm. ain't wise to piss off the son of fire. Yeah, that's the quickest way to not be able to get back home. Yep, quickest way to, well, be many places when you're turned to ash. Yeah, fair enough. And Denier folds up the scroll, puts it back into his pocket, pulls out the gym, looks at it for a second. I think I'm going to spend the evening getting ready and studying this thing a little bit more. As you look at it, I want you to make a will save. Oh, boy. Wisdom that save. 17. Oh, that's just a... Oh, that was just... Uh, yeah, sorry. yeah, wisdom save. It's, this, it's the same thing. Oh, wait, do you have a... Okay, yeah, you have a modifier in wisdom. Yeah, as you look at it, you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But nothing much else. All right. It reminds you of home. Denier takes it to his room. He prepares his uh, the new spells that he's been working on over the break. And he will meditate, study it, and generally uh, study it a little bit before he goes to bed for the night. All right. Wolfgang, what are you doing for prep? Uh, Wolfgang is talking to Jermot about the shard that he found. He did mm. keep it, and he was studying yeah. it. Um. So, Jamal. Yes, Master Connolly. This, this thing, we still don't know what it is. It's bad juju, whatever it is, sir. I agree. And the king wants it. For what reasons, I'm not sure. How can any one of us ever try to understand what them immortal folk try to know? I'm going to do my best to make sure he doesn't know we have this. I'm going to need you to do your best to make sure anybody in town doesn't know either. Oh, nobody knows, sir. Trust me. However, if there were one person that I think might be able to help you with this... You are heading to Dragon's Nest, eh? Yeah, that's right. Maybe it's time to pay the old boy a visit. My... brother. He owns a shop out that way. Loves doing some tinkering with a old mage haven't really kept up with him too much a uh, correspondence here or there but you know the post out here is just awful mm. so you should just not take it with me there well at the very least he'd know better than i would but if it, it is ultimately your decision sir if you want to leave it here i will guard it with my life and nobody will know we'll bury it out somewhere where nobody will ever find her <sighs> this might be my curiosity getting the better of me, but I would rather like to know what this is first. Might be best for Master Elliot, I was going to say. Yeah. You never know if, uh, if this thing had the power to corrupt that boy up north. You don't know what effects it might have on a... Well, a baby, even if that baby's got your blood in his veins. Walking well, turns around and looks at Elliot. And then... la, la, la. He's kind of like swinging at a little mobile that's hanging above his crib. Yeah. Gives a firm nod of resolve. And... Well, you got anything I can keep it in? Something inconspicuous. Hmm. Well, sir, let's see what I can whip up for you. He goes and starts rummaging through some of his old knickknacks and doodads. Oh, this might fit the bill. He pulls out a... It, it looks like a... Pretty much like a chain necklace. And at the end is kind of a... Uh, a decorative, like a religious symbol of sorts. It seems to be 
uh, from the Church of the God of Life. Hmm. Ah. This used to belong to your father. He cracks it open. It's a hidden compartment. Used to smuggle his pipe weed in here. <laughs> that old dog. <laughs> he was quite the character, Master Wolfgang. Let's see if that fits in there for me. I'm going to grab the crystal. I'm going to I'm going to wear a glove before I do as well. Yeah. And uh it's sort the of the same way you've been handling it this whole time. Yeah, I'm going to see if it fits in there. It does. It, it hmm. fits it's it's a little snug. It kind of scrapes the edge, uh but yeah, you notice also uh that whenever like the edge of the crystal is like hitting something, it does not chip. It just kind of <laughs> slides in there and actually hmm. shaves away some of the metal. Hmm. Well, that should keep her nice and contained, sir. It's made right. of your grandfather silver. <laughs> you know, I didn't really know what granddad was like. Oh, he was a good man. Strong, wise, a little quick on the trigger, though. Well, aren't we all when it comes to undead and vampires and werewolves and whatnot. But I will say, Master Connolly, you do take after him in one regard. Oh? He was an excellent father to your da and his brother. Oh. Thank you. Take care, Master Wolfgang. I'll, I will. I'll pack you some provisions. He says as he kind of like pats you on the side. And starts walking out to basically the larder to try to see what he can get together. All right. And Wolfgang will just uh, sort of stare at the uh, jewel inside of the inside of the necklace and just close it and sit next to Elliot. It unnerves you how calming it is to just look at its pulsing, glowing, like. It shimmers with such beauty. Like, there's, like, way... It's kind of like staring into a miniature Aurora Borealis. Hmm. It's almost entrancing. But you stop yourself, you snap it shut, and you go about your business. When morning arrives, you meet Garrick out front of town. He's actually arranged for a cart for you guys and uh, got a local ox that he rented from a farm. I figured this would be a easier way of traveling after all that marching. Uh, uh, you know, that's a damn good idea. <clears throat> Sorry. I had a wake-me-up beer. I'm just a little bit nervous before this trip. I haven't traveled in a while. I'm sure the Keeper's happy to see you go, Asmo. Oh, no, he's going to miss me, aren't you, Keeper? I just yell back at them. He just, he just rolls his eyes. <laughs> yeah, we have a... We have a we have a, what I can only describe as a relationship. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, the cart can only hold so much at a time, so we will have to take turns walking. Oh, my God, that sucks so much. Dibs in the cart. <coughs> As one gets in. Yep. Uh, Gar Garrick piles some camping supplies in there, a tent, a, a bedroll. But at least we don't have to carry all our shit. Ah. That is true. Not that I have that much anyways, but Garrick, are you planning on moving there? <laughs> he just sees like, him loading up so much stuff. He does have quite a bit of stuff. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, my when my brother was called down, he uh, was offered a place at the Honor Guard. So I, I just want to be prepared for any you, situation, really. You honestly think that's what we're being offered? Oh, I... I look, it, it's always been my dream to work it, for the king. What? It, it, really? That's your dream, is to work for someone else well i mean my my mother and father helped keep the peace in the capital and mm -hmm. my uh brother is there now i, I just feel like it's a, a legacy it's it's a great honor for anybody of my blood I just the ultimate dream of just waiting in for the guy with seven titles to his name is like i don't know it's a bit weird right like maybe two like three, if you're feeling a little bit extra. I have seven, though. It's a bit much. You know, I to each their own, I guess. 
Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I can ever convince you. But what's your dream? He says as he like smacks the ox on the ass and it starts walking. No, <laughs> did not be an ox. And Azra just puts his head behind his hands. Fair enough. And puts his feet up because Azra kinda... has feet, guys. Dun dun. He holds. He holds out. He holds out like a little flask to not being oxes. He takes a little drink. Here, here. Pat, yeah, passes it around wow. to anybody who wants to sip. De- 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 was here. <laughs> Didn't All right. See, <laughs> I, I assume we were grinding through town, picking up everybody. Oh no! You you all show. You all met up at the same place. Oh, I'm sorry. I talked over everybody. It's all good. He talked to you. You started a t- conversation. You begin your journey south. You march. You take turns riding. Every few hours or so, you decide to take a break, let the ox get some water, feed up, rest yourselves a little bit, eat some food. And every night, you'd camp out. You'd take it in shifts as to who was going to fetch firewood or try to rustle up some food. About three days pass as you're approaching the town of Waterrun. Osmo, you remember this place. This is one of the places that you stopped on your way out of the capital, on your way to Amberglade. What do I remember about it? Oh, you remember it's a military town. It basically, the entire town basically surrounds a military fort that is essentially a bridge over the river that leads towards the road that leads to the capital. A few forked roads converge towards this bridge. And as you enter this town, you begin to see in the background, in the mountains, the gleaming shine of Platinum Peak. The capital isn't far off if you can see Platinum Peak. Uh, one... Oh my god, I'm trying to find my pen. <laughs> no worries, I, 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 can, I can send all of this to you later. Thank you. Yeah, this bustling village that surrounds Water, uh, Water Rum Pass is just full of people. It's it's a trade hub for any traders that are going between the capital and the northern colonies. Osmo, this actually feels a bit more like home to you. A lot of moisture in the air. Moisture in the air. That and, you know, the place is crowded. It's It's very nice for someone like you who likes to blend into a crowd rather than stick out like a sore thumb to just be able to put your hood up and walk around and not be mm. noticed. You even have there there are even a couple of lizard folk walking around, so you're not even the only, you know, lizard-headed individual. Good for once. Also, oh boy. you happen to remember you uh you know a guy here. You know a guy who might be able to uh say fence that extra legal equipment you found. Hey, uh, Gary, can we stop in here? Well, I suppose so. The king did give us his blessing to stay wherever we want, and yeah, this is the first town we've seen in a while. Oh, it's good. It's a good military town. You can go uh, do uh, push-ups with them or whatever you want to do. I'm going to... Let's stop over there. I point at... Where's the nearest inn? Yeah, you, you, fi- you, you find the inn pretty easily. Garrick goes in and gets you guys set up with some rooms. I, I'm going to... Hey, guys, I'm going to be right back. i got to slip out and say hi to a um, friend. <laughs> he just like like slips out of the room and just huffs it. Anybody planning on going with Osmo? Oh, Osmo's trying to avoid them. Oh, I know. But that doesn't stop them from tagging along if they want. No, this seems like an Osmo kind of thing. Yeah, Wolfgang isn't terribly interested in what he's doing. Alright, Osmo, you're looking around. You find yourself at the bazaar. You're looking up and down. You're trying to remember where this guy set up. It has been a few months. Who knows? Maybe he got chased out of town, but he seems a little more cautious than that. And then there it is. The little rinky shack of Jimmy Allwrights. Jimmy Allwright? Jimmy Allwrights. Ah, oh, there's Jimmy boy. And uh, he starts walking up. Yeah, you Asmo. walk in. Waswell walks in. You walk into this tiny little shack with little bobs and little knickknacks just hanging around everywhere. Hello, welcome to All Rights, All Right Trading Company. How can I help? Huh. This squirrely-looking halfling with a lazy eye and 
two right hands. It's kind of like staring at you. Oh, it's you! It's been, it's been a while, eh, Asmo? Oh, it has been. It's been a really long time. I didn't think I'd be coming back this way for a very long time, but, uh, you know, life throws you curve, boss. Um, yeah, it, it does. Uh, you want to uh, clo- close that door behind you real quick? Uh, I'm, I'm, assuming you're, I'm assuming you're here for something. Asmo just kicks it closed with his back of his foot. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I paid for that. Okay, you know, it's fine. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I got some business to do. And uh, Osmo walks up and he pulls out some of the stuff. He pulls out the nice cutlass first. Pink. Oh. Yeah, take a look at this bad boy. What can you tell me about it? Now, well, let's see here. All these jewels themselves. My God, this thing's mm. worth quite a pr- And then he gets up to the point where uh, basically that sigil, that cow with the four horns. I can't buy this. Why can't I, you buy it? <laughs> Do you know who this belongs to? Humor me. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to assume that you do, but I'll explain it anyway. Thank you. This belongs to the Crowleys, and uh, I, I'm not. Look, even if I could buy this from you, which I well, I can, but I won't. It would be very foolish of me to try to. Uh, Get this back to the owner, which is the one who would pay the most for it, by the way. Uh, because he would think I stole it, and he'd have me killed. Uh, okay, knowledge history. Do you want to know who the Crowleys are? Go ahead. Knowledge history. Knowledge history. Ooh, my negative one. That is a nine. It rings a bell from your time in the capital, but you didn't, like, it, it's clearly a noble house, and you didn't really bother yourself with them. You were... You were focused on the day-to-day, the cut pursing, things like that. Mm. All right, so find the Crowleys and maybe be able to get something even sweeter than money. Uh, yeah, if you, uh, as long as he doesn't think you stole it from somebody. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, uh, good luck with this one. He just kind of hands it back to you. Uh, as well wraps up with a cloth. All right, I got some better stuff then. Here you go. All right, what you got? Uh, I throw him... Uh, I placed down three silver rings and a gold ring. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see here. He kind of grabs an abacus from below. Click, click, just run it there. Uh, I could do, like, 75 gold for this. Which is, For all of them? Yeah. Hey, come on. 75 gold. It's been so long. I'm giving you four things. One of them's gold. Give me a hundred. Yeah, Come one on. of them's gold, and you're asking me for more gold than you're giving me. I'm trying to be nice here. I yeah, need to make a profit. Yeah, but you I'm running a to... business. Yeah, but you refuse to take my hottest item because it's worth too much money. Your hottest item can get a man killed. Oh, please. You know and I know you got about five things in here that can do that for you. Yeah, and I don't sell them. That's true, you don't sell them. All right. Fine, 75 gold. Oh, by the way, what do you know about this? I pulled the necromancer symbol that I pulled off that guy. Shot in the dark, you know what this is? I don't know. Looks like some holy goo guy. Yeah, pretty much what it is. Put like, that you, back in there. <laughs> yeah, he kind of like hands it back to you. Uh, just real fast here, I gotta like... Where did I put my damn pen? <laughs> <laughs> One thing, I just want to write down the additional money I just got. Yep, All right, so 75 trade on gold. 75 gold on top of the other gold that I got. And all right, I'll just I'll just do that real fast. All right. Anything else it. I can do for you today, Az? Uh, not really. Any information? What's going on in the city? There's a, there's a big hubbub in there. Uh, oh, really? Apparently a lot of nobles brats ate it. So uh, not a lot of people happy with the crown right now. Oh, that's... Oddly fitting. That's good to know that. Do you hear uh, anything about the incident? You know. Uh, just what travels through town. I hear that uh, like three guys stood up, killed some, I don't know, zombie-making thing. I, I, you know how word travels. Yeah. Why, do you know what's something I don't? No, nah, not really. But anyways, I'm going to head out. Thanks for the money, thanks for the info, and, uh, Oh, by the way, as always, you didn't see me. I didn't see you. 
Uh, See you later. Yeah. Ple pleasure doing business as that. Uh, okay, he's gone. Finds it interesting. Aswell finds it really interesting that people are already talking about that. Yeah, word, word has traveled up and down through the trading posts. This is where word tends to travel through. Alrighty, and Asmo comes back uh, to the inn. As you settle down at the inn, uh, you Garak has gotten you each a room. Luckily, there was enough for that, and he presents the like. Basically, he's you, you get in at the process where the innkeeper is writing on the ledger exactly how much that would be billed for, so that the crown can deduct it from his taxes or pay him up front. Fun. Paperwork's Pleasure doing fun. business with you, boy. He says as he goes back to wiping the counter. He sets four keys down on the countertop. Mm -hmm. Asmo takes it, goes up to his room, and that's it for Asmo. Yep. Anybody have anything they want to do in this town? It is a trading post, so there are a lot of places that you can look. Hmm. Um. Is there any way that... Uh, is there any store that would sell blasting powder to the general public? Maybe, if you search around. I'd say that <laughs> you'd take your time. You could probably find some from the local smithy. He uses it mostly for cleaning, but he's not afraid to sell it for you. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll look around. Uh, I'll check to see you. You walk up to... Uh, a very burly looking man. He's got kind of a black smock on. Seems to be wearing a, a bandana and a like a little like scarf like around his mouth so as not to inhale any fumes. Oi, what can I do for you? I'm in the market for some black powder. Hmm. I mostly use it for cleaning my bellows, but I suppose I could sell some to you. How much are you looking for? Hmm. I'm tr trying to travel light. Um. Maybe about, uh. Maybe just a handful. I'll give you a small sack of it. You ain't looking to make any trouble with this, is you? Uh. Not any undeserved trouble, no. Five gold. Very well. Kind of he kind he kind of looks surprised and just hands to you. A, a pleasure doing business with you, sir. Is there anything else I can do for you? Um, got any raw materials? Lead. Well, I got plenty of that, sir. Mm. Got some steel. Got some copper. I just got. Uh, no, that wouldn't be any good. Mm. Uh, any more exotic materials, maybe? Hmm. Well, I ain't much of a jeweler. But every now and again we get an order coming through for some fancier looking things for some knights that are trying to impress the king. I got a little bit of silver left over. Hmm. Uh, alright. How much would, uh, bar lead, bar silver run me? Bar of lead, probably three copper. Bar of silver, eh, two gold. All right, I'll take them both. And... Pleasure doing business with you. Actually, give me three bars of lead. You got it. He loads up the lead. You're now carrying approximately like 20 pounds worth of material. It's a bit heavy <laughs> as he hands it over to you. I just... Uh... Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, br I'll bring it back to my room. Mm. Strange fella, that. He says as you're kind of walking away. Mm. Well, he wouldn't know what I'm going to use it for, so... No, he doesn't. He just thinks you're a weird man that just bought some ingots of lead and silver. And, of course, the blasting powder. Denier, is there anything you're looking for around here? Uh, Denier's just looking for a place that he can sell the ring that he was given by Asmo. Uh, which ring was that? I believe it was just one of the basic gold rings. Yeah, 
you don't have to look too far. There's a lot of traders everywhere. It looks like everybody's bartering and making deals. Okay. Then Denier will take his pick. Uh, of course, uh, given that he's in a town, he's going to approach uh, one particular merchant. Uh, are there any tabaxis in the town? Or no? uh, Not here. It doesn't seem that way. Okay. Uh, so Denier's going to walk up to one of the merchants, and he's going to set the ring down onto the table. Um, excuse me. I? I've what? got a ring I picked up in one of my travels. Oh, good for you. Would you be willing to buy it? Hmm. I'll take a look at it. Can I pick it up? Absolutely. Hmm. Shiny. How much you want for it? Can I make uh, an investigation check to uh, appraise it? Sure. Okay. Uh, that is an eight. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe it's worth like two gold. Maybe three. I don't know. How much? How much gold is this thing made out of? It's kind of where you're heads floating at. You've never really had to appraise things before. All right. Hmm. How about five pieces of gold? He looks over at you. I can make that work. I mean, it's me ma's birthday coming up soon. I guess I could get her something. Here you go. Kind of rifles through a drawer and uh, hands you a small stack of gold coins. Good doing business with you. Absolutely. He just kind of eyes you as you walk away. Bye! The near, the near smiles and then walks away. All right, make a perception check as you walk away. Okay. That is a nine. You don't hear shit. Yeah, I know. I, could, I just got taken. A little bit. But I made right. somebody's day a lot better, and that makes the near happy. Yeah, it does. You got, you got to be able to, you know, work around it some ways. Yeah, you guys settle down into the inn for the night. Uh, the noise eventually dies down. The sound of the river outside is actually quite calming. Osmo takes you back to your youth a little bit. And as you wake up, you get back on your ox and you start heading over the bridge and out of town. You continue your way down as the Mountains in front of you seem to be getting larger and larger. Platinum Peak really shines when the sun starts to come up. What is Man, it's like a beacon. What does Platinum Peak look like? Platinum what? Peak is, uh, just to describe it, like picture a vast mountainous landscape, and then at the very top sits, you know, where the summit of the mountain would be, where it normally be snow-capped, is a giant pile of platinum. To those in the kingdom, you know that this is the source of wealth for the capital. This is where a lot of the... Literally, this is where like 90% of the world's platinum comes from. It is a massive mine. Jeez. And it is way at the top of the mountain. And in front of it, just below, right at the bottom of the summit, lies the palace. And below that... The city of dragons rest. It's built against a mountain. Mm-hmm. Very defensive. Ooh, yeah, I'll say. I'll say. Yeah, you continue on your way, traveling down the path. You meet a few people on the road every now and again. You exchange pleasant hellos, and they continue on their path. Sometimes you cross a merchant... there's any small chat you want to make after, from your findings, this would be a good time for it. Mm. And that's if. So, how much did you get for that ring? Saw you wander off with it, Denier. Uh, I praised it for about two or three gold, and I was managed, I managed to get five from the merchant. <laughs> you probably could have gotten 25. He, yeah. got, he got grifted hard. You got hustled so hard. Yeah. I made the guy's day. 
He managed to get. He said he was going to get something good for his mom. I'm happy yeah, with all the money because he's going to resell it to someone for the actual price and make twenty gold off you. What am I going to do with gold? Buy stuff and books. <laughs> Come on, man. Money, money can get you stuff. Yeah, but a good story can get you even more. You money for money, you can pay for the greatest stories ever, which are in books, which you buy. You can also get yourself some some of those spell casting components that you're so fond of. Yeah, there you go. Pearl, see, pearls is what you were looking for, right? Yes, uh, for my identification spell. Mm. That reminds you, Osmo. You still have no idea what this ring on your finger does. Mm. Do I still feel? It, I still, it, do I still do I still feel protected? As you look down at it, you you feel safer with it on, but mm. you're not sure why. Uh -uh -uh. Besides, besides, I gave that to you, and the end, it don't really it doesn't really matter. I gave that to you as a, you know, fairsies, fairsies. So if you wanna toss twenty gold away, Sebi, I managed to walk away with some more. So. Got some fun money. Oh, and, uh... Hey, and does anyone know what, uh... What was the house, the house Crow the Crowley's Crowley. are? Yeah. Does anyone know what House Crowley is it, exactly? Uh, anybody want to roll knowledge history? Uh, that's a 20. Uh, Denier, through some of your books, you actually remember the name coming up once or twice. Uh, you believe it was in The History of the Immortal Empire... Uh, it seems the Crowleys were a noble house that aided the king a long time ago in his conquest of the lands, and currently uh, they own a lot of land and provide a lot of food for people, but they're very they're, rich. Those so are they're an agriculture-based family. Basically. Okay, interesting. So, basically... When the king rose to power, they were the ones to assist him in doing so. Uh, from what I've read in my books, they're, they have a lot of land, a lot of land, and they mostly deal in food nowadays. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. All right, cool. It's good to know. Speaking of food, it's getting a little late. We should probably settle down and rest up. Oh, shit. How far away from the city do you think we are? I'd Never. say we'll probably make it by, well, tomorrow afternoon if we keep a good pace in the morning. <sighs> All right. Are we good you to guys, stop, then? Yeah, so you guys settle off the carts and set up camp. You begin setting up a fire pit, but, uh... Yeah, you prep yourself a little bit of a meal light up the fire. Uh, Wolfgang, did you want to take this time to try to like melt down some of that lead? And Yeah. I'm going to see if I can craft some regular bullets and some silver bullets as well. All right. I again, you probably can't get enough heat to melt the silver proper. What if I casted Sacred Flame? Then you might. All right. I will cast Sacred Flame. All right. You point at the fire pit and let loose with some holy bright fire. I won't even make you cast it because it's just whatever. Boom! To your guys' surprise, the flames turn white, and it get a lot harder. It's really warm. Where did you learn how to do that? I didn't learn it, per se. Well, where did you and steal that, then? You didn't steal it, either. It's also really bright. It's like, it's like burning phosphorus or manganese. Mm. Well, it's... Quite the talent you have there, says Garak as he's kind of shielding his eyes. Though I think it's going to burn our wood a little quicker than I'd like. Uh, Osmo, it's during my shift to grab wood, would you? Uh, that kind of points out into the woods. Do we have an axe? Do you have do you got your axe? He holds up a hatchet. Yeah. It's a tiny little axe, God. <laughs> Osmo gra uh, yeah, eventually gra Osmo grabs it and walks away with it. Yeah, uh, he, he, he goes with you because, you know, it's your guys' shift. Wolfgang, roll me an intelligence check to, uh, you know, craft these things up. Okie dokie. Uh, that's a seven. All right. You're not able to, like, just, like, the heat of the flames definitely does the job in melting the silver. <clears throat> uh, but 
it's so bright. They just like looking at it's kind of hard. So your hands a little shaky, you lose a little bit of it. And what would normally have probably been 10 bullets or like 10 to 15 bullets or so you only manage to cobble together about five or six. Ah, uh, well, better than nothing, I suppose. Uh, Meanwhile. And, and uh, that was regular bullets or silver bullets? Those are the silver ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. the regular bullets will be a lot easier to melt. And you think to yourself, man, if it's this bright, I'm, I might as well just wait for a regular fire. This, this might have been a failed experiment, but you know what? You know you can do it. Yep, yep, yep. Osmo, Garrick leads you out into the woods. Just kind of like looking around. Oh, where's a good one? Yeah, is, is he's, holding like a, one? he's holding a torch just to kind of look around. Should we just go for one of the ones that are already fallen over? It's already dead. It'll burn mm. faster. This spot will work. He kind of throws the torch in the ground and it kind of ignites a small clearing around you. What? Or li it doesn't ignite the clearing. It uh, lights up the clearing. You know, I figured uh, I've seen you wandering off into the woods and I I'll admit I followed once. I've seen you practicing and it got me, well... A little curious as to exactly how much you've learned. Uh... So, care to spar? He kind, Asma... of, he kind of starts reaching for his blade. All right. Asma cracks his neck a little bit. Like, ah. yeah. Didn't know. Ah. Finally, a one-on-one -on -one fight. You got any of your buddies to help you out? <laughs> well, to be fair, I've been practicing as well, so I just want to see exactly where we stack up, because if we're meeting the king tomorrow, I want to know I'm ready. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll make sure you, you try your best. He's just cracking his limbs and stretching out because he's been cramped up all day. And as he's stretching, he just reaches behind and pulls out two of his blades and forms an X and pulls him to his side. so loudly, it's weird. Ching. <laughs> <laughs> so uh osmo actually like takes this opportunity to just leap at you oh osmo does or, or yeah. uh, sorry Gar garrick takes this time to just leap at you <laughs> and he misses you can tell he wasn't putting his all behind it just kind of giving it a quick test swing as you nimbly like take your sword uh, take your short sword up and shink, it just kind of slides out of the way good oh. you're, gonna have so. to be faster. you're gonna have to be faster to hit me <laughs> <laughs> So, what made you take up the sword anyway? Your move. Asmo pulls up one. Well, it was probably the best thing I could find at the time. Plus, I nicked a decent one off this old mercenary. But then I thought one wasn't enough. Two is always better than one. He pulls up the second blade and I swing at him. All right, swing. 22. You connect. Roll your damage. Eight. Ha! Whew. All right. Yeah, you, ca you catch him upside the cheek. Shink. <laughs> All right. I can tell I'm going to have to be a little more careful. Yeah, so, you should, how about you should, it? You should probably pay attention a bit more. And he does a second attack. I do a second attack. Second swing. This one yeah. misses. Oh. He he's nimbly dodges back. <laughs> All right. I like it. Come on. Winner gets a healing potion. Loser Whoa. gets two. And he swings at you again. <laughs> Ooh, that one connects. How? What, what is it? Uh, he's swinging with both hands. Yeah, this guy swings at you, and he catches you on the arm, and you take uh, nine damage. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, one second. I'm just making sure I got the right. Yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's fast. <laughs> that's good. How close is he to me right now? He's like in your face. Oh, he is, is he? Yeah, he's like right there. Asmo drops his sword and catches it and activates fighting spirit. Uh, feel free to click that, please. Fighting spirit is... Oh. Yeah, it's got to click the speech bubble on it. Oh, I got to click the speech bubble. Thank you. Yeah. At third level, your intensity in battle can shield you and help you strike true. As a bonus action on your turn, you can give yourself advantage on all weapon attack rolls until the end of the current turn. 
you also gain five temporary hit points. So you can... Yeah, Garak stares at you as your... Basically, your stare intensifies over him as you start to swing up at him. Go ahead and roll the hit. Alrighty. 17. Oh, it's a 19, actually. Yep, that man- catches him. You managed to catch him... Yeah, you, you catch him, like, right at the edge of one of his uh, spikes as it... Ah! And he just whistles, and I do it again. 16. I uh, know, you only get one attack. That was your bonus action, remember? Oh, right. Oops, sorry. My it's all good. It's all good. It's a new ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> all right. Well, you see, I picked up my sword because of my brother. He rolls... Uh, oh, he hits you again, dude. Oh, damn, does he? Yeah. His sword strikes true as he catches you at the midsection. It doesn't quite pierce any of your leather armor, but man, do your ribs take a crack as you take uh, five damage. Oh, goodbye, temporary hit points. (laughs) Yeah. How far back am I now from him? Oh, you're, you're still relatively in the same place. You guys are like in a melee. See, my brother was a hero to me. Should have seen him fighting that hill giant. You ever seen a hill giant? No, I haven't. How slow are they? They're pretty slow, but man, are they big. Your oh, move. They're really big, huh? That just means there's more than it. I activate action surge. I will hit that too, so you can read that as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Action surge. You push yourself beyond your normal limits for a moment, plus ultra. On your turn, you can take one additional action on top of your regular, a- regular action and possible bonus action. Nice. So, so, I mean, you go on, so you go on a flurry. So Asimov goes on a triple attack flurry. Yeah, you swing. Natural one. Ooh, but Garak glances that, and that sword goes. That short sword goes flying out of your hands. That's fine. And Asimov swings with his other short sword. Thirteen. Yeah, your remaining short sword. That's going to be a miss. You uh, unfortunately, that last one just threw you off balance enough that you're stabbing forward and just missing him to the side. Oh, really? Gotta remember, in any kind of situation, it's not about using your blades. It's using everything you have. And I activate Hungry Jaws and I bite his neck. You bite at his neck. Go ahead yeah, and just, roll for your bite. Uh, My bite attack, and I go for it, and that's a 16. Your fangs just barely graze his chin as he swipes <laughs> away. Ho! Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Licks his lips. I see <sighs> I still have that vision blurred into me. That hill giant just running up. But my brother, he just pointed at him and he points straight at you. And then he'd throw his javelin. And then he... Then he would strike true. Square in the beast's chest. That was actually his turn. I didn't hear you what? Sorry? And the javelin would strike him square in the beast's chest. That was his turn. Your move. Oh. I, can I pick up my short swords? Are they by me? Yeah, you'd have to make a five step to the north. Well, I uh, Asmo dips to the north and grabs both his blades. All right, use a disengage, and then you shift out there, stepping into the shadows a bit. Whew. All right, you've acquired your blade again. I'll still yep. allow you to make one attack if you'd like. As you Dark Souls roll and pick up your short sword. I thought I lost both ones, your sword swords. Nope, just one of them. You oh, only just one, one of them? out of your hand. Oh, oops! I thought it was both of them. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I do something else then instead? Uh, instead just, of just, ma- just make your attack now, because it's good that you have the second one. Eighteen. You catch him. It's a bit weird, throwing stuff from a distance. I yeah. have something up close and personal. You know what? I agree. He says as he takes the swing at you. With a nat 20, motherfucker. Oh, oh no! Oh, shit. Ten, it's, four, it's 14 plus three. 17 damage. Oh. This guy, as, as he grabs this short sword that you just stabbed that you just stabbed him with and swings down at your left flank. <laughs> it was the point. How much uh, How much HP you at? Six. I don't know, Six. Whew, you kind of kneel down. Are you willing to... Do you submit? 
Oh, Garrick, I would never give you the satisfaction. I activate second wind. Ooh, nice. Go ahead and roll your d10 to heal yourself. All righty, my d10. I will. Plus, uh, plus three. D10 plus three. That's 11. You heal up 11 points as a burst of energy seizes into you. Ah. And that's your bonus action. You can still attack. Good, because he's going to do attack again. He's going to attack with both short swords now. Yes. 19! Yeah, you head straight for him with the short sword that is not stabbed into him. You deal another 9 damage as you slice him across the snout. Ah! Oh. <laughs> you hoo I duck down and I, and I slice on the side. Oh, you, you, you used your bonus uh, action. Oh, shit. God damn it. Sorry. I'm very, I'm very sorry. I'm getting used to this. Ah! Ugh, Garrick uh, holds the sword in one hand as he points his hand to the side. You see a familiar glow. And this time, the fire doesn't go off in his face. It goes off in yours. Oh, sh <sighs> You take three fire damage. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. All right, That's right. You want to keep going? Um, ah, he just like Garrick just like lean. <laughs> Aso just gets down as low as he can, and almost like slab squats, and just and just pulls both his hands with the swords in them, and gestures forward like, "Come on." It's like, yeah. nah, I'm satisfied. He just yeah. kind of sits down. <sighs> he hands you a health, he hands you a healing potion. Ah, I pop it. All right, go ahead and roll 2d4. Uh, I was cheap using the fire. I mean, I tried to bite you, but at least at least that's like part of it. <laughs> yeah, I know, but at least you drew it out of me. I didn't want to use it at all. <laughs> uh, so for real, what, what did make you pick up the sword? He says as he goes about like picking up the hatchet and drinking a healing potion. As was just lying on the ground right now and uh, just looks up at the sky. Is it starry night sky? Yeah. It's a very clear night. Oh, well. Same as you, I guess. Oh, you had a brother? Of sorts. A long time ago. And... I just kind of just kip, does that kip up thing. But nonetheless, I'm my own fighter. And next time, I'm going to trip you, and you're going to fall on the ground and look up at me. And he winks. <laughs> well, if you can manage to get me on the ground, at least then <clears throat> we'll know decisively who's the winner. <clears throat> I believe as of right now, <clears throat> he says as he's chopping the wood, we're still tied. Seems to be fair. At least for right now. For now. Oh, wait. He smiles. I did one of those, like, kind of lean back and look with one eye. Mmm. <laughs> okay, and then we're back to chopping wood then. Yeah, he goes on to tell you a bit about his brother. He was a hero to me. Mm. I mean, I, when, when I tell you about that hill giant, when I tell everybody about that story, it's, uh... It's no lie. I... I was scared. That thing was impossibly big. And my brother, he just stood there and faced the beast down. And all I was doing was I was, I was handing him his javelins and his equipment. And <laughs> I, was, I wasn't useful to anybody. And when he got called up to the capital, I just had, I had really big shoes to fill, you know? No, you didn't. His shoes left. You don't have to walk in his shoes. Yeah, well, you tell that to everybody that looks at you and calls you the the brother of the great hero Yorick. You have to you have to stand up for yourself and make your own impact. I mean, it is one thing I can say for what it's worth. Comparing yourself to someone else does nothing, but leads you to pain. Because in the end, they ain't, they ain't a direction. They're just like a lighthouse in the distance. You can't walk straight there. 
You could look at someone and see someone and go that direction. But you might find something else along the way. Or you might end up right there. Who knows? I guess that's why, I guess that's why you're so excited to be going to the city. To see a big bro. It would be nice to see him again. It has been a couple of years. He hands you like a, a big bundle of sticks from this uh, tree yeah. that he's been hacking this uh, branch off of. Come shouldn't on, you be carrying? Waiting. Shouldn't you be carrying this? You got bigger arms. I got this bundle. He picks up another sack of it and the axe. No. You, all kind of, you both kind of wander off into the darkness back towards the... Uh, oh, he picks up the torch, and then you wander back off to camp. Mm-hmm. Osmo and Garak arrive back in camp. A, a, a little uh, winded. Uh. But they're, like, they don't seem to have any wounds or anything, because the healing potion... They healed them. They healed up the wounds, but they definitely seem like they've uh, they've gotten a little dirty. Set down all the wood. Yeah, the fire's basically from the white hot flames. The fire's basically in ashes now. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. And Garak starts to build another fire. Did the trees fight back? A little. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, your clothes are all shredded. Let me know if you want me to uh, help you get them cleaned and everything. You know, if you uh, if you wouldn't mind... He says, just kind of like pointing down at his jerkin that has several holes in it. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the tree smacked him really fast. Yeah, and it uh, caught him pretty good as well. Yeah, it did. All right. Uh, let me see. Do I have that particular spell? I know I have prestidigitation that can clean it up. Yeah, mending would be the spell you're looking for. Yeah. I was I was thinking it was either press digitation or uh press digitation is for cleaning. Yeah. Yeah, the the spell that we're looking for for patching the holes is I don't Mending. have that quite yet. I'm Although if we do come across uh Tom again, I can see about getting some of his sigils. Tom, ask Garrick. You never he kind met of looks him, around. Did you? I, maybe I I don't know a name. Yes, yes, yes. You did. Uh, the first day we met, all four of us, the traveling tavern, the wandering weasel. Oh, he was in. the guy behind the bar. <clears throat> yes. Um. Do you remember the 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 forest that we fought the bears in? Yes. On yeah, the way I, back, I remember that one. On the way back, we went to visit. Uh, the civilian that we met, we end up helping him get to a healer deeper into the woods. We went back to visit her on the way back from the wall. Upon coming back, we found a tree with a door. Well, Wolfgang and Asmo found it. I didn't even see it, but apparently you open up the tree and the tavern is inside. Okay, so all he does is he slaps that door on something and he has a place? That's crazy. That's what it seems. I mean, I'll be honest, I did go back out to that shack after he left, and it was just a shack, but I didn't think much of it. Yeah, the dude, I don't know what it is, but that thing is incredible, insane magic. Hmm. Well, perhaps I'll have to ask him if I run into this Tom myself again someday. Hmm. He says as he uses, like, flint and tinder to strike up the fire, and then just kind of gives up on it and just... Spits fire on it. That's better. Kind of tosses the flint and tinder. I don't even know why I carry that. In case you run out of spit. I guess. He starts on. He starts setting up a tent and like brushes down the ox. Why'd you buy a? Can I ask you a question, there, Wolfgang? Yeah. What's up? I was talking about your gun, but. What is it? I've never seen anything like it. Now, here's again, Asmo's heard of guns before he saw one. Yeah, the, but you've never seen one like this. The most you've seen is maybe like a, a flintlock or something that, you know, a 
shadier person might keep under their cloak as a surprise attack weapon, but it's a one and done. This thing looks really elaborate. I gotta ask, where did you win that? Get that made or find that? That, my slithery friend, is a secret. Oh, but secrets are so great. Even better when you share them. Tell you what, I'll tell you for five gold. Oh, I'm so, oh the problem is I'm almost tempted. <laughs> Ah, oh, Gil. I'll get you for cheaper later. As one just kicks uh, kicks back his puts his hands behind his head. All right, <clears throat> just goes back to cleaning out his gun, polishing the parts, making sure all, all everything is nice and greased. Yeah, you're brushing down the chamber, making sure everything's clear. It seems in working order. You give the chamber a little <laughs> spin. It's nice and smooth. I just put it away. Just put it in my holster. You holster it and you clasp the top piece so that it doesn't go falling out anywhere. Is that all you gentlemen intend to do for the night? Yeah. All right. Yeah. As you drift off to sleep. You wake up in the morning to the sound of a rooster, of all things. It's been a long while since you've heard one of those, Wolfgang. Oh. Garrick is already up, kind of breaking down camp. You guys gonna sleep all day? We're supposed to make it there by midday. Oh, God, we really have to. <laughs> I mean, I know we're a day early, but I figure it'd be a good idea. Better early than late. Yeah. Especially if we're audiencing with his majesty himself are we in sleeping bags you have a bedroll you're, you're kind of curled up in there asmo just like grabs it like grabs his bag keeps himself wrapped in it and gets onto the wagon let's go i'm tired asmo's feeling the hurt from last night yeah you, you got yourself a bit of a headache and even garak's moving a little slower than usual despite being the <laughs> morning boy scout that he is yeah. all right Let's move forward. I'll volunteer to walk so that the others can ride. Yeah, Gara cops up top and just kind of like, Kyah! leads on the oxen. As you're moving forward, you, uh, you're getting closer and closer to that mountain. You can even see the city in the distance now. It's red brick and you see smoke billowing out of chimneys. You can even make out the palace in the back and... Some strange tower in the middle of everything. And as you're going, you uh, start crossing by what seems to be miles and miles of farmland. Like, to one side of the road, you got, like, for a stretch of road, it's going to be corn. For a stretch of road, it's going to be wheat. Then various other crops, potatoes, etc. And on the other side, looks to be grazing lands for various animals of the plains. You got cows, oxen, pigs, some horses, llamas. If you want to make a perception check. Absolutely. 17. Awesome. A seven. Yeah, Wolfgang, you don't give a shit. Cows, whatever. Hmm. Uh, perception. You've been here before. You know what this is about. Uh, I got 21. Yeah, but more importantly, Osmo and Denier, you guys noticed that on the ass of one of these cows is a very familiar brand. It's that cow skull with the forks for horns. Asmo Denier, starts sweating. Asmo starts sweating profusely. Yeah, Denier, you remember this as you remember that symbol from the Cutlass. You know nothing about this person except for the fact that they're the Crowleys. But now that sigil starts to make sense for you. Yeah, this is Crowley country, y'all. Oh, boy. Finally, you make your way past all the farmlands after what feels like hours, and you find yourself at another military bridge. 
An attentive, although visibly bored-looking soldier halts your passage. Uh, what brings you to Dragon's Rest? And Asmo just nudges Garrick. Um, well, uh, he starts shuffling through. Uh, we received this. A lot of you received this. Oh! Oh, use the ones that Miss Whistlestein is waiting for! Oi! Terry! Jesus. Terry! Oi! Ah. Watch the gate! I'm taking these lot of Miss Wiz! Miss Wiz? Terry! Hey, sorry, we'll do it. What was her name again? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Miss Whistlestein? Miss Whistle. I'm gonna write that down. Miss Whistlestein. That's yeah, a. That's that. a now, the soldier begins to escort you and your cart uh, through the outskirts of the city. Osmo, you remember this place. This is where you spent, like, a lot of time with your brother. It's a bit dirty here. There's children dancing around and playing in some puddles. And some shadier individuals kind of skulking in the shadows. You feel eyes on you as you make your way through. Up ahead, however, lies the inner city of Dragon's Rest. Oof. Denier, you have never seen buildings this tall. There are a bunch of them, too. Like, three, maybe four stories high. All of them seem to be built from the same red clay-like material, except for three things. There's, of course, the radiant mountaintop of Platinum Peak, which, wow, like, just from here, you can just feel how massive this mountain is. And then there's the incredible architecture of the palace that sits just below its summit. It seems to be crafted of fine marble and even from here you can tell there are some elaborate decorations on the outside and of course there's the bizarre narrow tower with a blue conical roof that seems to be sticking right up out of the middle of the city as you reach the gates of the inner city you see an impatient looking girl with platinum blonde hair tied back into a ponytail uh miss whistlestein uh found them lots you've been waiting for ah thank you archer uh, that that'll be all uh Thank you, Miss Weasel. Uh, I'll uh, head back to Terry. He wanders off. Salutations. I am Venariel Wizzlestein. Pleasure to meet you, says the young girl who, uh, to Denier, she doesn't look like she'd be many years older than you, but she is a full-blooded elf. Something that you haven't seen before. Full-blooded elves are actually incredibly rare. There was some event way, way in the past that seemed to dwindle their numbers significantly. Now, um, may I show you to your accommodations, please? Uh, <clears throat> uh, Miss, Miss Wiz, was it, with, 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 so, is uh, it Steen or Stein? It's, 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 it's Venaria. You know, just call me Ven. Uh, Ven, uh, hi there. Uh, Asmo, just curious, uh, why, why, why were we summoned? Exactly. Well, uh... It's just been, uh, the question's been burning a hole in our pockets. Oh, my lord and lady wish to reward you for your efforts up north. You did save quite a few people, and we wish to show our appreciation thusly. Aswell just looks back at, uh, Wolfgang. <laughs> and an ear. What do you guys do? Aswell just kind of makes a face of, is, did, are you buying this? Denier seems rather happy. Wolfgang seems suspicious. So you probably get like a small eyebrow raise from him? Yeah. <clears throat> May I show you to where you'll be staying? Uh, I, I, I assume you'd like to unpack and rest up for tomorrow's meeting, of course. Yeah, of course. Just n I nudge Garrick <laughs> without breaking eye contact with uh, Yes, thank, thank, thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm... Uh, Garak scale, uh, Gar Garak bright scale. Yes, I'm. I'm aware of each of you. I have been thoroughly, thoroughly informed. She smiles. Uh, so this way, please. And she starts to lead you guys uh, to an area. Right on the inside of this. Right on the inside, there's a place where it looks like a bunch of carts are parked. Uh, we will not be able to bring the ox further into the city for uh, health reasons. So. Um, do you need it to be returned to where it came from? Uh, God, I, I didn't actually think of that shit. Sell it to an ox seller. Are there such things? 
Is know. there anybody looking to buy an ox? I will see if I can get something arranged for you. She kind of smiles and chuckles a little. Now, this way, please. And she uh, starts leading you through the city as you gather your things out of the cart. As you, thre- as you do, you pass through various parts of the city, including a large green park where the massive spire seems to shoot up into the sky, that tower, that mysterious tower that you've been seeing. Wolfgang, you remember this from your youth, and Osmo, you've only ever seen it from the slums. You don't actually travel, you never actually got a chance to travel this far into the city. Very often, at the very least. Uh huh. You walk past a shopping district, and of course, the constabulary. You see a few guards just kind of hanging out front, playing some cards. And finally, next to the road that seems to lead up to the let's say richer noble district and the palace you find the phoenix perch which is a lavishly decorated inn carved of this same red clay that most of this town seems to be made of but very much elaborately done there's decor outside there's uh emblems of dragons and fiery birds just all over and it's just beautiful and the inside seems to match extremely extravagant how tall is, how tall how how high are the ceilings the ceiling of the main lobby it it's insane i don't think you've ever been in a building that had a roof this high let alone a lobby this tall i mean you're looking at it, it's probably i don't know 20 30 feet up it's pretty big and it's all extremely extravagant, extravagantly decorated. Everything seems to be lined with marble or some sort of precious metal or gem. Ugh. Yeah, I'm feeling yeah. really out of place here, fellas. As was just licking his lips, looking at everything that he just wants to take a knife and start popping stuff into a bag. Welcome to Phoenix Perch, says a very well dressed man with a monocle sitting behind the uh, desk. Oh, greetings, Miss Venario. Yes, yes. I, 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 are there rooms ready? Yes, they have been for quite some time. We were not sure when they'd show up, but at the King's orders, they are ready for everyone. Thank you very much. And she leads you upstairs, and you each have your own room, and they are massive. How like, lavish? Wolf, how lavish we're talking here? Incredibly lavish. Like, the beds are stuffed with like goose down and duck down they're so soft like you like you you you're basically swimming in this bed it's so soft hmm. <laughs> yeah denier this like you the biggest place like the nicest place you've ever been in aside from this was probably a wolfgang's house and this room seems to be bigger and then wolfgang's house yeah <laughs> it's a modest cottage but it's nice and homey this room is bigger than entire houses in my village. What mm. is this? Well, uh, when His Majesty has guests, he likes to make sure that they are well taken care of. And we will see to it that everything is fit for you so that you may be comfortable. Uh, as you're talking, a, another gentleman walks in who seems to be dressed very similarly to the man behind the desk. Pardon me, sir. And he starts taking a small measuring tape, puts it around your neck. Yes, uh, 35, uh, 46, 27. He start, oh, yes. starts taking a bunch of measurements on you as a person behind him with a ledger starts scribbling down emphatically. Oh, Thank God. you. He starts they... going around to each of you to do the same thing. Well, well, are you trying to measure me to mount my face on a wall? No, sir. 27, <laughs> he says as he's like wrapping around your neck. What are you... What, what, what is this for? Mm, sorry, a little tight. 28. <laughs> a little close for comfort is what I'm saying. What is Forgiveness, this for? Uh, well, uh, Venar- Venariel just answers, well, if you will be audiencing with the king, you will need to be dressed appropriately. I'm I'm sure you're aware of this. She looks at you, like all of you. Asma, will go. Asma just looks and just narrows his eyes and goes, yes, uh, uh, of course. How could I not know that? That's right about it. He kind of looks over at the other two. Anyway, if you have any need of anything, please feel free to let any staff here know. Uh, I do have to get back to the lady and inform her that you have arrived. 
please let us know if there's anything we can do to make your stay more comfortable. Thank you very much. He kind of bows and begins to walk away. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, unless there are any questions that you have about the area that were not covered, forgive me. Where's a really uh, nice place to get a meal? Well, there's the uh, cafe downstairs, of course. This place is rated rather highly, but if you head out towards the shopping district, one of my favorite places is a house called The Meat House. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Do they serve meat? Yes. Uh, just making sure. And yet, ironically, they have very good salads as well. She kind of uh, smiles. Anything else I can do for you before I make my leave? Uh, yeah, I'd like... Uh, uh, did I get uh, Jamat's brother's name? Yes, you got uh, Jamat's brother's name. His name is Timri. Tin Timri? Timri, as in T-I-M-R-Y. T -I -M -R -Y. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for... Uh... I'm looking for a gnome, a uh, kind of old guy uh, named Timry Atson. Timry Atson? She kind of she kind of like looks at you. Oh, that is interesting because my grandfather Talos runs a shop with him. Really? Yeah, he retired as head of the household some time ago, and well, those two kind of took to each other, so they're running a little enterprise in his golden years. Interesting. Yes, you can find their shop just down into the shopping district. It's uh, actually not very far from the meat house. Uh, yeah. Is that, All right. Is that everything for you? Uh, the Lord and Lady. Um, what are they? In, in a matter of, in a matter of speaking, I don't want to do anything that would say offend them in their audience. Is there anything that? we should not do in their audience? Is there anything that they like for their guests to do in their audience? Is there anything that they don't like for us to do in our audience? Is there anything that will basically get us turned into ash when meeting she, the Lord and Lady? She kind of laughs. Oh, just don't get on the bad side of Master Horatian. You'll be fine. She kind of smiles. I assure you, the Lord, I, I assure you, my Lords and Lady are quite palatable. She smiles. Just Understood. a little, just a little intimidating the first few times. She kind of chuckles. I can imagine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I do have to go report back. We do hope you enjoy your stay, and I will be uh, sending someone to collect you tomorrow for the audience. Enjoy your time around town. She kind of gives a bow and exits. Okay, so I can really want to go to the meat house. I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to see Timory. Ooh, uh, you do that, uh, Garrett, do you want to join me for the meat house? Uh, I, <laughs> I, you know what, yeah, why not? Uh, how I, about uh, you? Mm. I think okay. I'll join you two if you don't mind. Ooh, yeah. Now, all of these things seem to be in the same direction, so. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, go check out the... Rich part of town. Yeah, you guys step out onto the town. Uh, you're still kind of wearing your casual getup. Do you leave anything behind in your rooms when you leave? Aside from, you know, camping supplies and things that you packed oh, for are, provisions. Are we are we able to walk around with our weapons? Or is that even allowed? Nobody seems to be stopping you. Although the guards do give you a bit of a look whenever. But they understand that there are certain folk around town that... It's their job. So they they just try to keep the peace if anything breaks out. Okay. I don't really leave anything behind. Just kind of take everything with me. I'll leave my pack. I'll leave my quarter staff. Uh, but for the most part, just, you know, me and my cloak and my other positions go with me. All right. So you still got the crystal and you still have the your spell tome. You have everything that you would need should something bad happen. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm leaving behind most of my like materials and stuff like that for for making bullets and stuff. But yeah, no uh, I'll I'll be you. taking my yeah I'll be taking my weapon. Makes sense. All right, you guys head out into town and uh, right before the meat house, you do find uh, Talos and Timri's house of tinkers and tools or house of tink uh, house of magic tinkery. Sorry. 
uh, had to scroll down to the name. Asmo says to uh, uh, Wolfgang, you want to save your spot after you wrap up your business? Yeah, sure. Okay. It'll be a table for four. <laughs> Asmo's like watering in the mouth. <laughs> Stop that. No. Right, everybody um, else going to join Asmo at the House of Magic Tinkery? Seeing the, the sign Magic Tinkery, Denier's eyes get just really big. His whiskers start twitching, and he turns and changes directions and starts going with Wolfgang. Alright. So, Asmo, you and Garrick keep heading toward the Meat House. Yes, we do. Alright. You guys keep heading down that way. It's just down the street a little bit. But uh -huh. Wolfgang and Denier, as you enter the shop, you're, you're greeted by the smell of oils and metal and a distinct... I don't even know if magic has a smell, but man, do you think that's magic? Oh, hello! Greetings! How can, how can we help you? Welcome to Talos and Timrace, says an old elf who's standing behind a counter. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was looking for, um, Timry. Timry? Well, hold on a sec. Oi, Tim! 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 <laughs> Tim! <laughs> what? Got a visitor! Tell him to piss off! He's in a mood right now. Tell him his brother Jamot sent me. All right. Tim! Tim! What? Says from your brother Jamot! Fuck, fine! <laughs> Start hearing some, like, stomping as, the, as a little panel on the floor opens up. Oh, what's that old bastard up to? He looks up. I'll be hit. No, you're too... Little Wolfgang? No! How you doing, Timry? Oh, I ain't seen you since you was knee-high to me! And that's pretty small, mind you. He kind of, like, gives you a laugh as he pulls a prosthetic leg up from under him. Chink! Ah, there we go. Starts wandering towards you. Oh, look at you, my boy. How's... Oh, how's the old bastard Jamat doing? Uh, he's doing just fine. He's, uh, he's taking care of my kid. Oh, my God. A father yourself now. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Give my best to the missus. Yeah. He, Hold on, he's gonna... Are, are, you, are you trying to hide? Not really. All right, his... Yeah, he just kind of looks at you. Oh. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. It's fine. You didn't know. Man, it's, uh... It's the life, I guess. Yeah. So, uh... What, uh, what brings about this happy reunion of ours? Well, actually, um... Uh, Jamat told me that you were in the capital, and... We had been summoned... Me and my group had been summoned to, uh... To an audience with the king... Is that what all that hullabaloo is out out there? Heard about yeah. some heroes coming into a town. There's everybody throwing up a fuss. Yeah, That's they're you. Call they're calling us heroes, but uh, I think we've been pulled into town for a different reason. If you want to go yeah. somewhere private for this conversation, I feel like it'd be prudent. Well, oh, hell. He kind of like waves you down to this little uh, tunnel he has. Ain't nothing too dangerous down there. It's turned on anyway. Kind of scrambled, like he kind of hobbles down. Keep looking after the top there, Talos. You yeah, got it there, boy. <laughs> ah, what a character. He just kind of smiles. Uh, Denier, do you follow or do you stay up top? Denier has no idea what's going on. He is staring at these trinkets yeah, and baubles. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of clockwork mechanica around here. Uh, yeah, he forgot that Wolfgang was in even inside of the room at the moment. <laughs> Denier, you want to join us? This kind hey, of concerns you too. Uh, sure. And he'll pull himself away from the little random bubble that he was staring at. 
No, it's a little. It was a little clockwork bird. And he'll follow Wolfgang. All right, you guys head down into what seems to be a basement of this building, and down there. Hold on a sec. A bunch of luminescent beams start to light up the room. Ah, still working on her. Oh, hold on. Kind of twists a crystal. There we go. Now oh, the room that's is so cool. nice and lit up. Ah, just a little bit of magic tinkery I'm working on. Trying to see if we can light up a room when it's dark out. So what is it that uh, you boys have been... He kind of pulls a little lever and the curp, latch up top goes down. What is it that you boys have gotten yourself into? Well, actually, um, Jamat didn't know what it was, but you being the more on the tinker inside. Uh, I've always known a bit more about some things than old Jamat. Well, he recommended me to you, and he was hoping you could tell me what this is. And I pull out the locket. As you're pulling out the locket, good to know he's still wise in his old age. Kind of smiles to himself. Yeah. And as you open up the locket, his eyes just kind of, oh. M may I? He kind of like reaches out to it. Wear gloves. Doesn't matter. He pulls it like he, he shows like he moves his hand. Tick, 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 tick. Not quite what it used to be anyway. Uh, it's more for its properties. He kind of he kind of shrugs. All right. Uh, as he puts on a glove, the spell that seemed to be on his hand dissipates and you see this metal frame on it. Ah, there we go. Kind of holds it up. Hmm. My boy Talos up there. He's examined a few of these in the past. Ancient, these are powerful. Where'd you get this? We found it in the uh, in the head of a necromancer. Hmm. Not a great place to find something. No, but he said something about the bleeding god. Bleeding God. I ain't never heard nothing like that before. He starts uh, taking it over to a desk where he has like a series of magnifying glasses. Yeah, fascinating, these things. I only ever really got a look at a piece before when the king was having some of it looked at. It's amazing how they glow the way they do. But if you look close enough, like he starts sh shifting down magnifying glass upon magnifying glass upon magnifying glass and when it finally like in there you start to see like the stream of green like floating around I would need each of you to make a perception check okay including me I'm not there no oh, that's, right. that's another seven <laughs> yeah neither of you are seeing it lucky see number seven th yeah you see in there right there he, star he starts like trying to point with like a small pin can just make out the faintest outlines of a rune just traveling through that it's just bizarre a rune yeah and there's there's a lot more of them i mean i can only make out one at a time and i ain't never really had the touch for magic that old talos up there has but it's nigh impossible to decipher this is ancient primal sort of magic that's not good. I suppose Talos's family is the only one that might know because they're the only ones that... Well, they're the only ones that knew Arkanos. Hmm. And just who is Arkanos? He kind of, like, looks over his shoulder at you, kind of cocks an eyebrow. Here, I thought you were the magic sort. You don't know your own patron? It's the god of magic, boy. He left a long, long time ago. Longer than my old bones have been on this earth. Well, unfortunately, you know about as much as me and old Talos about this. And we don't know much. We just know the king is very interested in making sure this stuff doesn't stay out there. 
what stays with him? Just kind of like nods and like looks at you. Hmm. That's the part that worries me. Mm. I feel I, you. I've heard through the grapevine that he's gathering quite a bit of this stuff. As far as I'm aware, that's true. Down in the vault of the palace. Nobody really knows exactly how much he has. I mean, this is the biggest piece I've ever seen, he says, like, looking at that, he says, like, gesturing to your little necklace. Well, we've got one bigger, and I motion to Denier. What? What, what are you? reaches into his, uh, his spell component pouch, he grabs a gem, and lifts it and shows it. Dear God. M may I? He just kind of reaches out with his glove. He offers it. Make a will save. All right. Will you save? Oh, will. Wisdom save. 13. You snatch it back into your hand and, like, pull it away from him. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry, is it, is it personal? Denier. I... You can examine it in my hand, unfortunately. Something... It's... It's the only trace of home... Don't you want to know what it is? I want to know what it is, but still, I can't let anybody take this from me. It's my only ticket back home. Seems right personal to the lad. He can examine it, without a doubt, but I must hold it. All right, well, do me a favor and just hold it under the magnifying glass, at least. Can I insight the near? Yeah, go ahead. 17. Yeah, uh, Denier, you, you would actively try to hide your feelings, so go ahead and roll a deception. Okay. 20. You look at you look at this cat man and you say, you know, he's he's still a boy. Like he's still growing into a man and it's obviously just making him really uncomfortable. Clearly he doesn't part with this thing very often. It reminds him of home. It's It doesn't seem like anything untoward is happening. Hmm. I'll, I mean, if you, if you just hold it under the magnifying glass at least for me, lad. I'll move it over to the magnifying glass and I'll hold it exactly the way that he wants. If he wants it moved, I'll move it and let him examine it, but you know, just not letting it go. Huh. Something seems to be off about this and a little crack there. Kind of like points to the hairline fracture that seems to be going down the face of it. Yeah, it unfortunately it wasn't like that whenever I found it, but upon my taking it, Whenever I woke up, it was cracked. I've been trying to figure out how to mend so that I can attempt to repair it, hopefully. Well, you probably come to the right place. I mean, I can't mend no crystal gems or nothing. But my boy Talos, his family, they do run the Magen Guild around here with them magic folk. Hmm. I think we'll pay him a visit then. Eh, not very hard to find those folk. Of course, a little harder to get in if you don't know who's who. You've seen that spire in the middle of town, surely. It saw it coming in. Yeah, kind of hard to miss that little eyesore. That's why they tried to gussy her up with a park. But you gotta live somewhere, I suppose. Yeah. I'm afraid I don't know much more about this than you do, but... I cannot believe you have something of this size. Well, well, be safe with that. Yeah, thank you for your time, Timory. Absolutely. I'll, I'll be sure hey. to give Jamont your best. Please do. Tell the old bastard to write every now and again, and... By the way, he's still, uh... Kind of like motions with his hands, like tinkering. I I pull out Requiem and I show it to him. <whistles> oh, oh. Oh, doesn't look like he lost his touch much. No, much. he sure hasn't. May I look at her? Go for it. He starts looking her over. Hmm. Sight's nice and level. Once this little contraption starts flicking it around, oh, it rotates. Okay. Clever. Very good for the trade, I imagine. He hands it back to you. Very good. 
Well, if you ever be needing anything else of the sort, feel free to drop by here, because that gives me a few ideas that I might start working on. I think I will, as a... Uh-oh. You there, Snake? Cut out? Yeah, just a little bit. I heard, oh. uh, I think I will, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that's that, that, That's what I said, yeah. All right, perfect. All right, so... He, in, he ushers you up again. Uh, uh, now you now you two take care, and uh, if there's anything up here that old Talos can get you, please use my name, and you can get a nice discount. <laughs> use your name, and I'll charge him extra. Ah, oh, you old fucking coot. Ah. All right, so as you climb out of the basement, you're back in the shop, and there's plenty of mechanical doodads and magic artifacts to look at. Denier is going to pick up, or he's going to motion to the the little uh, clockwork bird. Um, excuse me, I I had an interest. This one caught my eye. I was oh, wondering how that much little it was. birdie. Hmm. Children around here love those. We've been selling them for about five silver. Perfect. I'll take it. Hmm. And pleasure doing business with you. I will pay him five silver, and I will take my little mechanical bird. You have a little mechanical bird. Is there anything? Try, uh, try, try not to lose it. They're a little tricky. Of course. Thank you. Can I make like a, a perception roll to see if I can see anything that might be on the more violent side of, of the technology in here? Go for it. Alrighty. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Perception. 21. Hmm. You see a few things that catch your eye. A couple of runes that look like if they are set somewhere, they uh, might deter intruders in a more violent way than uh, may be necessary. Doesn't look like there's any form of weaponry around here, though. Like, not real weaponry. Hmm. Interesting. Anything catching your eye? I crafted those myself. Huh, yeah. Uh, what's the price on those, uh, on those runes? I'm, I'm assuming those are warding glyphs. <laughs> of a sort. Well, uh, let's see. I've been selling them for about 50 gold apiece. Oof. And they are reusable. It just takes a little bit of time. Well... My my good friend Timry. Mm, Fifty five. <laughs> Did the price go up? Yes. <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> he did call out that he'd charge you more if he used his name. I thought he said he'd charge me less. <laughs> Must have been paying attention. Those strange crystals. Tell you what, tell you what, fine. I can sell it to you for 40. Just for Timry's sake, so I don't get a goddamn earful. Ah, uh, well, tell you what. Uh, next time I'm around and I have more, uh, more dinero in my, my pocket, I will certainly, certainly, uh, stop by. Dinero, dinero. Northern dialect, so fascinating. Uh, well... You can blame his brother Jermot for calling money all sorts of different things. Sort of rubs off on you after a while. Well, then I'll make sure to charge him extra, too. <laughs> all right. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure meeting you, too, sir. Uh, your name again, you said Wolf... Wolfgang. Wolfgang. Wolf yes, very nice to meet you. Oh, come to think of it, my granddaughter mentioned that name the other day. Oh, yes, that's right. You you folk are in town for the for the audience with the king. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, fancy that, walking into our little shop here. Oh, well, hope the night finds you well, gentlemen. And you too. Enjoy the bird, he waves. Denier looks like he is a kid that just got a brand new toy. He looks ecstatic. 
he just looks over, smiles. Have a good night, sir. <laughs> Bye. He exit the shop, uh, examining the bird carefully. A uh, whisker still twitching, eyes very large and happy. It's a fascinating bit of machinery here. It looks like it has like a little twist on it. That uh, you can remove the key and it'll start unwinding. And God, there's just so many points on this thing that it, you're not even entirely sure how it acts. I can't wait to take it apart. As you walk out onto the street, the smell of meat hits you. Just like mm. char-grilled meat. <laughs> Your stomachs begin to grumble as you realize it has been a bit since breakfast. I think we're going the right way. Yeah, certainly smells like it. All right, you find your way over and under a small uh, black tapestry, you, well, awning, black awning, you see the words Meat House. <laughs> oh, it seems to be the place. And they're just kind of just kind of sitting just under that awning. You see a table for four where Osmo and Garrick, or a table for five where Osmo and Garrick are already sitting. Oh. Osmo just does Osmo see them or is Osmo what is Osmo doing right now you have an ale and <laughs> Garrick is also drinking an ale you guys are just kind of chatting uh, uh, he is blah 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 and uh, Garrick sees you and he kind of waves at you uh, howdy do you just, can you I know you can smell that but can you smell that Oh, oh, it smells I, goddamn good. I already ordered an all-you-can-meat platter. I can't wait to meet it. Hmm. Get in here and get yourself some ale, because guess what? Okay, quick question. Did they hold up? Did we hold up our little uh, signature, like the little th written things of the king? Did we get oh, yeah. to eat for free? Oh, yeah. We, we are eating on the king's dime today, and it's time for me to unhinge this jaw the way it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a very fat man with like jowls and he's just wearing this massive white apron with white pit stained shirt he just kind of walks up carrying two trays of meat one that's just like piles and piles of slices of meat and the other one which is literally just a small pig on a platter and just sets the small pig in front of Osmo and sets the piles of meat in front of uh, Garrick. Uh, uh, what you lot want? Steak. I can do that. I think How much? <laughs> How much steak? <laughs> uh, what's the biggest you got? You got it. He turns over to Denier. Half a chicken. chicken. Half chicken. That's right. Eating lot. I can dig it. Can do. <laughs> Oi! Get the cow! He starts yelling into the kitchen. I want you all to know that, uh, while we are, uh, you hang out a lot, and don't do this very often, but, uh, this is important for me. Asmo unhinges his jaw and begins to slowly swallow the pig. Yep. It tastes real good too. Oh. Like this this thing's been smoked. It's it it almost seems to like compress in your mouth. It has been cooked for so long that it actually seems to like contract and all these juices just <clears throat> swim down your throat. The near stares in horror at this. Oh. Garak just sort of averts his eyes a little as he's just like grabbing like hunks of meat and throwing it into his maw and Osmo just sits back with it halfway in his mouth and just like sits tilts his head back and lets the rest of it slide in with his arms behind his head yeah man it, this is like one of the easiest things you've ever swallowed uh. it's like compressing and juicing itself all the way down it's so delicious uh. and delectable the skin crackles uh. as it makes its way past your jaw yeah, yeah. Osmo has this massive lump in his throat as it's like slowly working its way down. Osmo grabs the pint of beer and starts pouring it as well. 
Yep, the, the lump starts to move a little quicker. <laughs> it's like a caravan accident. It's horrifying to watch, but I can't tear my eyes away. You realize as it starts going down, uh-oh, I'm going to have to start undoing some buttons. And you start doing that as it starts sliding down into your <laughs> yeah, gullet. he does. <laughs> as this horror is overtaken, uh, the fat man comes out again, sets a ch- half a chicken in front of you, Denier, and there's a little bit of parsley over on the side just to, just to show you that it's fancy. And for you, Wolfgang, he slaps down this... You've seen the Flintstones. It's basically a brontosaurus steak that's like, I don't know, 90 ounces. Oh, my goodness. You lot's been paid for by the king, right? <laughs> he kind of, like, blows his nose into his hand, like, into his uh, apron. Sure. Get me some ale while you're at it as well. All right. Steps back. Comes out a few moments later as you're starting to cut through that steak and lets you an ale. Is that pig good? He points at the snake. <laughs> so, he's like, have, thumbs up. <laughs> his uh, eyes are watering as he's trying to keep it down. From the yeah. sounds he's making, I'd say yes. Good. I pride myself in my pigs. That's why my name's Pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this place is great. <laughs> this place is amazing. Uh, you're always welcome at the meat house. He just kind of sta- he just kind of stands there awkwardly. You know, like just the kind of mater sure. d just kind of stands there a little too long. Asmo just like pull- grabs his just just pat like slides his hand down his arm just like, <sighs> like thank you. He give he give, he gives a small blushing smile. Hmm. <laughs> and, he wa- and he wanders away. <laughs> That was the best meal I've ever had. You ate oh, that's so good. That was so good. Uh, I can always smell this place. I never thought. Uh, oh, just like he's like John Drool firing out of his mouth. I'm just so happy. And tomorrow we get to meet the king himself, says Garrick. Yeah. Like what it... I've heard stories about the king. Yeah, so have I. Me too. The only what person I... I know is Menem is my brother. What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? That no matter what stories you've heard, none of them measure up to the man himself. You know, we've traveled a long way in two directions I don't know if any of you would necessarily be friends but I'm glad that I've gotten to know you he kind of holds up his ale ah hell I'll drink to that he just Asma holds up the little beer the ale there's left in his and holds it up then he holds up his drink as well yeah sure Walking holds up his drink as well. To a journey's end. Or to a journey's beginning. <laughs> what are you talking about? We just got here. Well, we don't know what the king wants from us. This might be the start of a much longer journey. Oh, that's, that's foreboding. Uh, uh, that's very foreboding. Uh, oh my god. Okay, that. That's what I like about you, Denier. You got high aspirations. Clacks, you guys clack mugs and drink and make merry and you make your way back to the Phoenix Perch and there lying on your beds are some very nice clothes made of some very, very nice materials. Like, this is nicer than anything you've owned. Wolfgang, possibly by choice, just because you don't like dressing up like this, but <laughs> stuff's made of fine silks and inlaid with gold thread. Osmo, this shit looks like it's worth a lot of money. Even this afterwards. And I can't try it on until tomorrow morning after I, uh... Pats his belly. Pass this. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) We all have our our own separate rooms. You all have your own separate rooms. All massive with 
extremely extra stuffed beds, like just super comfortable. As no snakes in the bed. Oh yeah, you're just like slithering through this stuff, <laughs> like it surrounds you. It feels like you're in a sleeping in a nice warm cloud. Yay. Yeah. Denier climbs onto the bed after he finishes his studies and everything. Yeah, he and sinks he just, into it a little. Yeah, he sinks into it, and all he does is just emanate happy cat sounds for a solid five minutes or so before he ends up going to sleep. Yeah, Garrett can hear your purring through the other side of the door, or through the other side of the wall. Yep. Cat wiggle, uh, happy purring, happy Denier. Wolfgang has some trouble getting to sleep. Oh no! This is, the fir- this is the first time he's been away from Elliot for this long. Yeah, it, it has been quite some time. You've been gone for a couple of like it, it feels like about a week or so now that you've been traveling south. I mean, the ox has definitely made it a lot quicker than your than your journey would have been, but you're definitely looking up at the moon and thinking. I don't know. Wonder how he's doing. Yeah. You eventually drift to sleep, but a little uneasily. Uh, it's very comfortable. This bed is impossible to crawl out of if someone comes knocking at my door. And in the morning, just that happens. Good morning, huh. sirs. Grab my gun. No kidding. <laughs> you see, you seem like the type that would sleep with it under your pillow. Yeah. Well. You, you you know yeah uh yeah they uh yeah they they awaken you uh please uh make ready yourself uh the baths have been drawn if you wish to use them yep and you, okay. just imagine you slowly trying to get out of bed <laughs> yeah anybody who opens the door is greeted by a separate employee of this inn each holding, like, a robe and a towel. Asmo opens the door, and he's just covered, drenched in sweat. <sighs> Look at two hours early. Worth every moment of it. Let's do this. We'll, we'll, we'll clean the mess for you, sir. <laughs> there, there, there is a... Uh, there, 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 was, there was a chamber pot. There was one. You're correct. Oh, God. Why? He sees, he sees you to the baths as he holds the robe out for you in the towel. You each can bathe as you see fit. And <laughs> as you get back to your room, Osmo, there's just a crew of people in there that are just rotating in and out trying to get rid of this pig. This leftover pig. <laughs> I have not indulged like that in a very, very long time. I understand, sir. You're happy to be of assistance. <laughs> yeah, you all get dressed up, dressed to the nines as uh, a couple of royal, it seems like palace guards step up. Like, they're definitely in different attire from the town guards, and they aren't in that military getup. It seems to be uh, red and gold laden armor with various sigils of dragons and such embroidered all apart. Uh, or, uh, emblazoned across it. We're here to escort you to the palaces, sir. Are either of them dragonborn? Uh, no. Okay. These two are, well, one of them is an elf, and the other one is a halfling, so he's kind of a short dude. Hmm. How far away are we going? Oh, just up the street. Uh, gonna be a bit of a crowd, so we're just here to manage that. Big pardon. Yeah, as you walk through the streets, you notice that there's a bit of a crowd gathered outside the palace. Uh, and as you approach, you begin hearing, "Oh, that's them! That's the are those them? That they're the heroes? Oh, they're here to see the king! By God, I've never seen one up close! Oh, look at that!" Yeah, you just hear the crowd clamoring, and you know, gossiping around you. Oh, that one looks like a cat. Yeah, we've met a few of those. <laughs> Uh, Denier gives a little bit of a smile, but he keeps on going. Yeah, you guys are led up to the palace gates, and guards. What, 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 what are we seeing? 
uh, as you are walking up, you start to notice that uh, you're, you're walking up this kind of twisting ramp as things start to get nicer and nicer. And all of a sudden, all of this red brick that's around you starts turning into basically carved marble. It's like incredible architecture work, like how this... It could have even been possible. There must have been some sort of magic because you can't even imagine this much marble existing in one block. But as you run your hand across it, it's completely seamless. It seems to be carved and the stairs seem carved of it and it seems in line with gold. And as you get closer to the palace, the gold increases and you start seeing more gemstones until you, preach, uh, until you reach the palace gates and Garrick pauses for a second. Yorick! He runs up to the uh, dragonborn standing at the gate. Oh, well, I'll be damned. There you are. Yorick, I, 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 I made, I, I'm finally here. The, the king, he asked for me. <laughs> yes, he did, little brother. Yes, he did. Do you think he's, uh, do, do you think he's going to ask me to? The king's business is his own. Hard to say for sure. But I'm very happy to see you again. He kind of pats him on the shoulder. That's about no. as much affection as I can show on the job, I'm afraid. Gives him a wink. And Garak just kind of chuckles. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh... It's good to be here. Well, go on. They're, uh, they're waiting for you inside. As you enter the palace, uh... Um, Garak's, bro Garak's brother each kind of gives you a nod, gives each of you a nod, unless one of you wants to speak to him on your way in. Yeah, as Denier passes Yorick, he uh, he tell he speaks up. Um, Yorick, I believe mm -hmm. your name is correct, and I believe you are Denier Highwind by your yeah. description. Indeed, your brother speaks incredibly high of you. Does he now? <laughs> Garak just kind of looks behind him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come Ooh, on. Don't kill <laughs> him. Uh. Denier simply smiles and continues on. Uh, after tapping him on the shoulder a couple times as though, uh, hey, good job. He kind of gives a smile. As you guys enter the palace, it gets more and more lavish. Uh, the floors start to become carpeted, which is very rare. Uh, I mean, the, the Phoenix Perch had carpets, but this stuff, it seems to be almost silken like it's shining almost as if like it's gleaming glittering it if you weren't stepping on it and you didn't feel it so soft you would have thought this was made out of rubies and as you are walking through the lavish decorations lead to amazing statues some dragons some human one that seems to be bursting forth with energy Huh. These seem to be heroes from the past, just emblazoned all over the place and honored for their efforts in raising the Empire. Uh, this Asmos, way, sir. Asmos just drinking it all, and he can't believe he's here. Yeah, this is more money than you have ever seen, ever, and probably will ever see. And uh, Asmos says to himself under his breath, <laughs> Look who made it here, Deus. <laughs> And if you want to roll a perception check to try to catch what he said, Garrick missed it. I mean, if you want to roll stealth, if you're under your breath, it is under my breath. Yeah, go ahead and roll stealth for that. Twenty-four. Ooh, yeah, you're really, really in, almost internally monologuing that. Oh uh, yeah, natural one. <laughs> <laughs> these, stat these statues are catching your eye, man. Ugh, this is way and... too rich for my blood. Yeah, Twenty near. Uh, yeah. You thought you heard him mumble something, but it could have just been like a like a little leftover pig bone stuck in his maw or something. <laughs> and as you enter further into the palace, oh, this way, sir, you climb further and further into these stairways and through this lavish grand entryway, uh, the guards that were with you lead you into a bit of an antechamber that sits outside the throne room. Upon uh, being... Summoned, you may enter through the door, and you are to kneel in front of His Majesty and the Royals. Uh, uh, what is this about? Oh, just so we uh, can better prepare ourselves. He's ignoring and leaving the room. No, don't go. 
Yeah, you start to hear a little bit of a... You're, you're left in a nice room. Like, it's got nice, cushy chairs lined with the... Feels like the similar material to the ground, but then again, you're not walking barefoot. Are, are, so. are, we, are we essentially in the king's green room? Yes, very much so. That's exactly what this antechamber is. There's, like, fruits lying about. There's some oil paintings on the wall. Uh, one depicting a mighty brass dragon breathing fire upon a, a bunch of people. Mm. Charming, I know. Oh, yeah. Beneath it, it says, The Great Immolator. <sighs> yeah, you guys make yourself comfortable here as some uh, nerves begin to set in. <sighs> yeah, Garak is just kind of pacing. <sighs> Popping nice grapes job. into my mouth. Can I just say, y'all just say this is weird. weird. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a... Uh... Incredible honor, but yeah, it's it's a little weird. It really is. All we did was like kill a couple of zombies, and he shot some guy, and he shot some kid. You begin to hear a little bit of clamoring in the other room. It sounds like a few lords and ladies just gabbing and talking amongst themselves. Must be people from the court. Oh, I have no idea what we're in for. It's just there can be a lot of people that to be looking at us. Will they know we're nervous? <sighs> And there, finally, you hear a blazoning of trumpets as you hear a, a voice call out, Lords and ladies of the court, your royal majesties, it is my honor to introduce Garrick Brightscale, Denier Highwind, Wolfgang Connolly, and Asmo, the heroes of Amberglade. The doors swing open and your eyes squint as the sun shines directly from this large open space in the back of the room onto every onto a very reflective marble and gold services within. As the court applauds and your eyes adjust, you make your way into this large and lavish throne room. You see many nobles dressed to the nines as they politely applaud your awkward little parade. You make your approach toward the three royal siblings standing at the end of the room. To the left of the throne stands a hulking beast of a man, maybe seven, eight feet tall. You'd maybe confuse him for an ogre if it were not for his polished bronze skin and equally polished armor. You also can't help but notice the massive sword on his back. The blade looks bigger than any of you. And to the right of the throne stands a beautiful woman, her features sharp and elf-like. Actually, hold on. Oh, is that uh, is that Miss Wiz? No, uh, that is. Uh, hold on, sorry. Uh, I'll grab this later because I got a description I'm reading through. Her features sharp and elf-like, but her skin is nearly a mirror of silver. And at the center, in the grand throne, sits a man of pure gold. His stoic demeanor a contrast to his lavish surroundings. Let me grab this picture real quick here. Oh, boy. Yeah, we got art, son. Art from the wonderful Caitlin C37. E? There it is. Which one? That one. Shoot. Doesn't seem oh. to be uploading, but I will show it on my end here. I'll show it to you guys later. Throw it in the Discord. I will. But Yay! Oh. This is what we are looking upon. Whoop. For those in chat, these are the three that stand before them. And I will throw this in the Discord since the file size is just a little too big. That's oh, yeah. Not... Too, too big for Discord, too. Are you shit? Oh, my God. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you guys later. Sorry. If you're on stream, you can see it. Ooh. Yeah, I'm watching, I'm watching on the stream. Good Lord. Wow. Yeah, these people are incredibly imposing and as you get in front of them Garrick kneels Denier will uh, kneel beside Garrick I guess Asma will just take a cue and go alright here we go <clears throat> get down on one knee Wolfgang Wolfgang looks around for a bit then eventually kneels please rise says the man in the throne Oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> you and your fellow townsfolk have done a great service to our empire and its people. For this service, you are due equally great gratitude and compensation fitting your efforts. 
As we speak, the town of Amberglade is being supplied with proper equipment for its armory, as well as materials and funds for upkeep of its facilities and continued growth. For you, however, I wish to present a more personal boon. And uh, a few attendants usher forward a few very familiar-looking cutlasses From my personal armory, it is a gift to you. Uh, Garak actually holds up his hand. Uh, sir, if I, if I may be so bold. The, there's a hush that kind of falls over the crowd. Please, says the king as he nods. Um, I, I wish to forego any material gain. I... I wish to be a part of your honor guard like my brother. And he kneels down and kind of looks down. Interesting. Yes, your brother Yorick has served me quite well, and I do see a similar potential brewing within you. Thank you, sir. He's, his smile is just unwavering. However, you are not ready for such a position. And I see conflict within you, and that sort of indecision could prove to be catastrophic in a time of crisis. I... I under... I understand, sir. Sorry for my... In, impatience. You see a noticeable change in his face as he's trying to maintain composure, but he's failing at it a bit. He's, he's definitely seems upset. With that said, the local constabulary has been quite overtaxed as of late, and I dare say we need some fresh faces. So, until the time arises when you become worthy of a position within these walls, I shall offer you a position within the ranks of our peacekeepers. Is that to your liking? His face again changes to shock and then into joy, into disbelief. I... I... I, Yes! Thank you! It is an honor, my lord! Thank you! You may You may rise, young Brightscale. Now, on to... You hear the door behind you slam open. I, I turn a, slowly. Yeah, there's a bit of a clamoring in the crowd. And as you turn, walking in is an elf with chestnut brown hair and emerald green eyes. He wears very fine clothes, though they seem a bit disheveled, as if he had worn them for a few days in a row now. Oh, Yes! Thank you, heroes of the North, for your service to the Empire. We are all deeply, deeply thankful. He kind of bows to you, but he doesn't take his eyes off the king. But what of the dead's service? What of those who died at your precious wall, my lord? The silver woman looks looks uncomfortable. Lord Crowley, I, I assure you, we... Now, now, love... We can talk later. Right now, I'm talking to your brother. So please, great immortal emperor, tell me, what do you plan to do about those who died? Oh, oh, that pittance of platinum that you sent? Of course, how could you measure something like that? What's, what's another dead elf to one who lives forever? I sympathize with your loss, Lord Crowley. Your son died in service to the Empire and its people. I'm sure Targaryus would be proud. Ah, yes! My thrice great-grandfather! I knew him. He was a good man. Spoke quite highly of you. He died when I was nearing my third decade. And yet, there you sit, unmoved by the sands of time. It's no wonder you know not the value of our lives. I mean, you don't act in time to save most of my people now, did you? Protector of the realm. The bronze monster man just seems to lurch forward and pick this man up with one hand by the scruff of his shirt. I'm going to sniff <sighs> the air. I'm going to sniff the air real quick. Just check to see if he's been drinking. Oh, man. Roll a perception check. Go for it. <laughs> Twelve? Yeah, even with that, you can still smell it on his breath as he's walking past. This man is liquored up. But as this massive bronze behemoth of a man lifts him with one hand, he looks unafraid as he's snarling in his face. Xander, you piece of trash! Let go. 
You're ruining my suit. The bronze man looks like he's about to explode. The veins on the side of his head begin to pop. His teeth begin fang-like, and he appears to grow another foot or two. Hrish! That's enough. He visibly just stares this man in the eye as he takes a deep breath. Unbreaking a gaze just sets him on the ground. There's a noticeable hush in the crowd who seems very concerned right now. You see, says the elf, as he turns towards the crowd, this is your empire. They have all the time, all the power, and if any of you were to say no, they'd kill you without a second thought. They're only beasts after all, he says, giving a knowing glare at the throne. He walks out of the room, flipping the double bird over his shoulder as he does so. <laughs> Looking over his shoulder, the invitation's still open, by the way, as he walks out the door and his attendant closes it behind him. For a moment, Aslan just whispers to Wolfgang, I know it's kind of weird to say, but I think I got his son's sword. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Wolfgang sort of like, Visibly, just one single sweat drop. <laughs> just like, yo, fucking what? The king, like, everybody just kind of sits awkwardly for a moment. Horatius is just fucking fuming, man. Like, you can see steam rising off of his goddamn flesh. Please forgive the interruption. As I was saying previously, while we wanted to reward you for your efforts at the Maw, you were summoned for other reasons. The stories that have found their way to my ears I have found most disturbing. So, I wish to hear your recollection of the events as they unfolded, and please, be as thorough as possible, he says looking over you. <clears throat> what kind of look around? Yeah, you, you're each kind of like looking back and forth like, what, 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 what do we say? Uh, well... <sighs> We were summoned to the wall. It was a bit of a journey. Um, we ran into a child in need. His mother was very sick, so we helped him out. When we got to the wall, it was locked. The gate was locked from the inside. We couldn't get it open. Mm -hmm. We found a way inside the walls through a secret opening on the side mm. once we were in and I, I look around the, I pause and look around the crowd we saw there, the undead there, there's a noticeable commotion and like people are definitely whispering behind you uh, the bronze behemoth of a man known as Horace is like oh, fucking knew it and the, sil the silver lady is keeping her composure <laughs> Sorry, the dice roll with that was funny. Yeah. Normally I try to roll it on the mat, but... Yeah. That isn't all. Unlike most undead I've heard of, they seem to be almost organized. Many more were waiting in ambush outside of the wall. And once we had found their master, they closed in. Uh, Asmo holds up his hand, a finger... He yes. pretended to be, he was a younger lad, and no more. How old would you say he was, Nick? It's about 15. About 15, 15 years old. But his story didn't make sense when we first found him, so we questioned what him. Are you doing? I'm talking to the king. <laughs> oh, fucking, I am sorry about that. It's okay. I, I played it off. And... We questioned him further, and he revealed himself to be a worshiper of, and a believer in, and receiver of. And I kind of look at the guys. Should I say it? The. I just look at uh, Denier, and Denier can say it. The bleeding god, sir. Hmm. His facial expression doesn't seem to change at all. I see. Bleeding God, you say. 
It's what he claimed. And for the few moments we had with him, he was very sure of his lord until... And gesture back to Wolfgang. <sighs> Necromancer. Mm. Necromancer. Working for this bleeding god. I put him down. Necromancers. Horesh. It's got to be that black and white bastard again. Brother, give me permission, and I will march so many boots so far up his ass he'll be coughing up a cobbler. <laughs> Tia turns to him. That's crazy. We've been at peace for nearly a thousand years. We've seen neither hair nor peep from him in as long. This shit has him written all over it. If we don't act now, next time he acts, it'll already be too late. I will not allow the peace we have worked so hard to achieve be undone because you're feeling nostalgic and I won't sit by while our people die because you're too scared to lose another wing! A mighty war erupts from the throne as the hall rings like a horrifying mighty gong and I need you all to make a wisdom save. Oh, wow. 15. Let's see. 15. Oh, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom save, hang on. Yeah, wisdom yeah. save. 20. Ooh, Wolfgang, as this roar echoes out, you feel a shudder go down your spine, but you remember your training and you take a deep breath and shock yourself to stay with this. But Osmo, Denier, you feel cold. And despite being surrounded by people in a warm room, you feel absolutely terrified and alone. Yeah. If it weren't for the fact that every single muscle in your body froze up at once, you would have turned and ran for the door at full speed. Just looking at these people, it dawns on you that your life is merely hanging by the string of their whim. If they chose, and they wanted you dead, you would be, and there isn't a thing that you could do about it. Garrick is frozen very similarly to the rest of you. <sighs> Enough. That is not what we are here to discuss. However, there is one thing that I do require. The winds have been carrying a bit of odd nostalgia with them lately, I will admit. And I need the crystals that you have in your possession. You will be compensated. He says as he looks down at the three of you. If I may be so bold. Please speak. What are you planning to do with these crystals? I know you've been collecting them. Hmm. It's no secret that I have paid for their acquisition. But I'm afraid that that sort of information is not for your ears. Insight. Go right ahead. 14. <laughs> He's not lying. He definitely doesn't want to tell you. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. <sighs> Asma looks at Denier. Denier will Asma. look back. Denier, Denier, your hand, you find your hand like rumbling in your pocket. Mm hmm. fingers just kind of glancing over the stone. I assume by the fact that you've come across them, you understand why I need them. Wolfgang takes out his pendant. Mm, I know. Yes. I've done a little bit of research on these so far. I know they're laid with some sort of rune, and I pop open the 
pop up in the secret compartment. Some runes, some strange essence, maybe. You Powerful, see, yeah. ancient, primordial magic is at work here. You truly have done your research, Master Connolly. Now, he holds out his hand. And two, uh, two attendants kind of walk up to you. And, and I, they hold out their hands. And I, I take out the crystal and I say, These crystals are very powerful, very ancient, and power can corrupt. Be careful, my liege. And I hand it over. He kind of he kind of nods his head toward you. And the attendants take the crystal and ferry back. And you. He looks towards you, Denier. Denier takes a breath, and he's obvious uh, there's a mental battle going on. He knows yeah, that his life is at, is at stake, but I take it that you're going to make me uh, roll a wisdom save? Alas, I've become predictable. Yes. Uh, 15? Your hand is clasped pretty hard on this thing, and you're struggling. What is it that Denier wants to do? Denier wants to survive, and he suspects that if he doesn't give it up, the king will kill him. Yeah, as you're struggling to take it out of your pocket, your your hands just trembling, just you're you're getting visions of home flashing into your head, your mother's face, the warm island air, the breeze, the smells. It's all there. It just needs to be unlocked. The attendant is standing in front of you with his hand out. And the king, go on. He slowly brings the, brings the gym up. It's the only thing I have left of home. And I assure you, you will be compensated. Uh, Denier closes his eyes. He looks away. And he slowly extends the gem. The attendant he... grabs it, and I need you to make one more will save. Okay. 21. In a moment, you're just like, fine! And, like, tearing off a band-aid, you let go, and the attendant just calmly walks away. You feel lonely. As the gem is taken from him, he, Denier, clutches the, clutches both sides of his head as though, uh, as though he'd been fighting it the entire time. But it was only due to sheer uh, survival that he actually let it go. Now I understand that might come across as unpleasant. And I do wish you all very well. You are free to stay in the capital as long as you wish as our guest. Thank you again for your service. Two more, uh, like, two more attendants usher up to you. And Wolfgang, they hang you. They hand you a bag of gold, and Denier, they hand you a bag, but it has considerably less coin in it. Mm -hmm. You are excused. I take the bag, I kneel, and then I leave. The king nods as he stands up and walks out. As he stands up to leave the room uh, with his brother and sister. If I, if I, uh, excuse me, my king. Mm. The king turns. Yes, Asmo, was it? Yes. Uh, I have in my possession something that is not of a more of, of a powerful value like those gems, but it's something that I came across that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, the gentleman who came in here and made a bit of a scene. Lord Crowley. Yes, uh, my 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 liege. Uh, may, and um, he kind of pulls out the because he kind of had it tucked behind him. It was just like a wrapped up weapon. Hmm. I just set it down. Like uh, kind of sets it down comically and like pulls back the thing. I believe this belongs to someone that he cared for. I don't know if that's worth anything, but I have a feeling that it's not as dangerous in your hands, as it may be just 
a simple snake like myself. It's a... Yes, that is a sword presented to his family many years ago. He kind of looks over to Tia, nods. Uh, Tia is the silver woman, by the way. Mm. She nods to a, a very familiar face over in the corner, and Ven comes and picks it up. Yes, I suppose he would like to have this back. We'll make sure to let him know who gave it, unless you'd like to return it yourself. He has been known to be quite generous for things like this when he's... Ah, uh, then, oh, then no worries. He just grabs it and drops it up. No, no, no worries. That's good. Thank you. She says, thank you. Saves me a trip and kind of rolls her eyes. <laughs> okay, then. <clears throat> thank you so much. If I could, yeah. one more thing, Your Majesty. Mm. Surely, well. surely you must know who and what I am. As I stated earlier, the winds have carried a bit of a nostalgia to them. Then you know my family. I do. You know what we've done. Were, the Connollys were a great house around here until you decided to leave. I'm sure leave. we will be seeing each other again. Indeed. Those crystals. Should they pose any danger to the world, I should know about it. I'm sure you will, he says as he walks out of the room. Ominous! <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, this man, like, his, his facial expression never changed. Like, he's just weathered. So, yeah. The uh, court seems to, like, usher themselves out, just... Man, that was awkward. And you're left to two <sighs> guards in there that are willing to show you out of the palace. That was crazy. That was that was insane. <laughs> Garrick is still like well terrified from the scream, but he's uh elated right now. I get I get to be part Just like my mom. Which he... Okay, what was it called again? Uh, for, uh... The constabulary? Now, uh, as we know what's, what the constabulary is. Yeah, you get into trouble with them a lot. <laughs> yes, I did. I uh, hope you enjoy, uh, cracking down on fun. Oh. I will, but... Uh, I just... Should we start calling you constable, then? We'll see, I guess. He kind of smiles as you all walk out of the palace, and you're greeted by a mob of people just all clamoring and a uh, a, a black-haired, unsightly-looking man with an eye patch just kind of approaches you guys. Oh my god, you're the heroes of the North! I can't believe I get to meet you! Oh, look at you, sir! And he starts, uh... uh by the way, uh, Denier, as you, uh, as you walked out, I'm sure you looked at the bag. Yeah, uh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, as you walked out, you look in the bag, there's twenty five platinum in there. Ooh. Yeah, that is like Holy shit. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That is a <laughs> lot of money. Wait, and, can... uh, Wolf Wolfgang, you have five hundred gold, just so you guys can add that to your inventory. Oh fuck. And and Asmo did Asmo did not get a bag. <laughs> Asmo Asmo got a lovely embroidered royal cutlass. Same as the rest of you. Ooh. Except for Garrick. Ooh, a cut ooh, yummy. So yeah, a few, a few people approach you. There's that uh, unsightly man with the black hair and the uh, eye patch and the brown cloak. And then there's, like, you know, a nice woman that's re really looking at you there, Wolfgang. Oh, hello there. <laughs> so you're a hero. And uh, Osmo, you got a few kids. So, like, the snake, you, you have teeth? And just go. <laughs> like, <a gold. laughs> they, they, like, they kind of scream and just start running around. <laughs> He's a snake. And uh, and uh, Denier, this guy is just like infatuated with you. He's like, oh, it's a very pleasure to meet you. Oh, you, I've heard tales of what happened up there. You're absolutely incredible. And look at you, you're so young. He starts patting you on the shoulder. And look at this cloak, it's real nice. He starts like pulling open your cloak, just kind of like looking at it. Uh, Denier uh, will only has will only allow this for so much. If the cloak goes too much, he grabs the inside of the cloak, but. 
Uh, All right, go ahead and make a perception check as you're uh, feeling awkward about this. Okay. Uh, perception. That is an eleven. Yeah, you don't. You don't. He's, he's not doing anything untoward. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. As he starts shaking your hand, Wolfgang. Yep. Yep. Patting you on the shoulder, and then he moves over to you, Osmo. Anybody else want to make perception checks? Uh, Asmo is Asmo's going to roll a perception check on this guy. Yeah, as you're looking at this dude shaking Wolfgang's hand. Uh, 13. Uh, this, I don't sense anything. Asmo's going to say to the guy, because the guy seems enthusiastic, what happened to your eye? Uh, one thing that you do notice with your perception check yeah. is his nose is fake. Like, it seems to be putty. Well, uh, you know, you, you just kind of lose things around here. Where'd you, how'd you lose your nose, though? Ha! <laughs> well, that's a funny story. And he turns and starts booking it. I want each of you to roll me an athletics check as this man is booking it away from you. Denier, your money's gone. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, this guy just starts hauling ass. 13. Is my money um, gone as well? Oh, uh, it's, it's athletics, not initiative, sorry. Oh, it's athletics? Yeah, you're trying to keep up with this guy. This guy just robbed you. Oh, natural one! <laughs> Two natural ones in a row! I'll okay. get him! Oh, fuck! Falls okay, downstairs! Yeah, yeah, give you... it some time. Hang on. I'm refreshing the page. <laughs> All right, Wolfgang, what do we got? So far, you guys aren't doing so uh, hot. I'm refreshing the page. I'm making absolutely sure I'm not going to get a natural one. And? Athletics. All right, Wolfgang seems to be the only one that seems to be keeping up with this guy at any sort of pace. Like, this guy's around the corner, and Denier, like, you're you're just... Oh, I know, shit, I know. my money's gone. Hey, wait, sir, where'd you go? Son of a... He starts trying to move, but the crowd has just gotten so thick that you and Osmo are, like, trying to work through, but the commotion of Wolfgang and this guy running has shoved people together in a way that makes it really difficult to you get, uh, for you guys to get through this crowd. I... Uh, I uh, the... I probably my money's probably gone now as well, right? Uh, yeah, your 500 gold there that you had in the bag is also missing. You feel noticeably lighter, but as you break around the corner, you see this guy booking it for an alleyway. I need you to make another athletics check. And Even better, I am not gonna let this guy get away with our money. Yup. Hang on. I just. As I'm running, just this white light starts emanating from my eyes. This white, this white energy, this radiant pearlescent energy courses from my being and wings sprout from my back as I activate Radiant Soul. Yeah, uh, as, as you book it around the corner and the crowd seems to dissipate, you, poof, guys, as you're trying to make your way through the crowd, you just see like a flash of light from the corner. You're not sure if he just cast a spell or what, but something happened over there. Go ahead and click that ability real quick. Radiant Soul. Starting at third level, you can use your action to unleash the divine energy within yourself, causing your eyes to glimmer and two luminous incorporeal wings to sprout from your back. Your transformation lasts for one minute or until the end, or until you end it as a bonus action, during which you have a flying speed of 30 feet. All right, you basically like just leap into the air and almost unconsciously to yourself, you start to glide. It's bizarre, like you can't even explain it. You've, you've felt something like this before, but never with such intensity. And as you glide, you're like catching up to this guy as he books it into the uh, alleyway. But as you turn the corner, there's two of him now and they're each running in a different direction down the alley. I need you to roll a perception check. Angelic sight. Oh, what does shit. that one do? Casting detect magic. All right, yeah, uh, neither of them are magic. What? Fuck. Oh, oh shit! All right, this seems this seems planned out. Um, yeah, roll roll perception to see if you can decipher which one's which. All right, perception, natural twenty. You oh. see it right away. This dude's nose is like flapping off now. That's him. <laughs> you start booking it after him. Yeah, I just dive bomb his ass and try to and, tackle him to the ground. Yeah, you you get around that corner. And Osmo and Denier, you're slowly catching up. You see uh, Wolfgang running towards this alley. And as you get into the alley, you turn to where he ran. But there, 
he's not there anymore. Instead, there stands a woman in a dark charcoal cloak, kind of ushering you forward as if like, come on, hurry. What? Wait, wait. What? Uh, to us? She's, she's yeah, every to all three of you. Just come on, hurry. Uh. I. She's waving quicker now. Let's go. I, I, what? She Is holds. She, o- she holds. She holds she open. Is she hot? I guess. You can't really tell. She's in a cloak. I don't know. I don't know what to ask now. Yeah, she she holds open like a, what looks to be a fake door, like on the side of the wall there, like a secret door. And she ushers you inside. I swear to God, if Tom is in here as he's running into the door. I'm going to roll an insight. I'm going to roll an insight on this lady. Just to, just to see what she's trying to get us to do. Yeah, go for it. That's a six. She just wants you to get in this fucking room, dude. And hurry. De- De Niro runs in. Asma was like, De Niro, oh my god, don't just run into random doors. And then Asma, Asma runs in after him. The door closes behind you, and a torch light strikes up on the wall, and she takes down her cloak. It's Ven. <sighs> Thank you. Sorry uh, for all this, uh, well, holds up the cloak, cloak and dagger type stuff. Uh, not necessarily part of the job, but it's what you gotta do in order to make sure that this sort of thing stays on the down low. She says yeah. as you hear the clacking of footsteps behind you and you turn and descending a staircase is the silver woman that you met from the throne room. I'm sure it's time we have a little talk. And that's where we'll leave off. What? What? Yup. What? <laughs>